Jacksonville, Florida. Jay Sean Corbin from Rockledge. Florida State's first year of football, Roddy, 75 seasons ago. Ed Williamson, it's the only year he was the coach. They lost to Jacksonville State, Don Sales, on December 6, 1947, 7 to nothing. The second game of the 75th season is underway, and here is Jay. And Travis Jay will be taken down around the 20-yard line. And my goodness. The 34th career start for Mackenzie Milton, Roddy. And it's been one heck of a journey, Wes. In 2018, has that devastating knee injury against USF. Multiple surgeries to repair that leg. They didn't think he would ever walk again without pain. 34 months is how long he had to grind to get back and how good it was when he did. 1,017 games between days, between games played, days between games played, and longer than that waiting to get his first start in his recovery. Two backs, two receivers, and the tight end, McDonald. Corbin and Toa Feely in the backfield with Milton. First down play, and this is Toa Feely with five, 10 yards nearly on first down. Or Corbin, beg your pardon, zero Corbin. Jay Sean Corbin, of course, who had 15 carries, 144 yards, and the long touchdown run against Notre Dame last Sunday night. Second down and a yard. First throw of the night. And that's caught on the backside, and that's Cameron McDonald, the tight end, junior from Long Beach, California. We talked about these two running backs in the open. West and Florida State opens with a run. When McKenzie Milton came in the game, he made some plays with his arm early, but they really, really settled into that run game. They ran the ball really well while he was in. I would expect that to be a big part of this Florida State team today and as they go forward in the future. First down and 10. Ball at the 34 for Florida State. Here's Milton, a quick throw, and this is Malik McLean stretching out to the 41-yard line. It'll be a gain of seven. And Feaster made the tackle. Malik McLean's a freshman that the coaches are really excited about, and I like him too. I mean, he's got all the talent in the world to see him get involved early. 6'4 freshman. And here is the second down give and another first down for Corbin. Out to midfield before the Gamecocks finally trip him up. Knowles have made a change tonight at center. Babyon Johnson is the pivot for Mackenzie Milton in the middle of that line. Replacing Maurice Smith here tonight. Here's Tola Feely. Around the far side and toward the 41. Another gain of almost nine on the play. And that was a play where the running back helps his, his buddy, the running back. Watch Jay Sean Corbin on the right side of your screen. Just gets a little chip on the defensive end, DJ Coleman, to spring Lawrence Toafili around the corner. Yesman Green, Yule Gowdy, the stop for Jacksonville State. Here's Milton. Pushes it to the right, going to throw for McLean, and in and out of the hands. The freshman Green, I think, was in coverage with Malik McLean. And they had a play set up where they were faking a screen to the outside, a little smoke screen that they run a lot. McLean kind of stutters and then takes up, takes off up the sideline. Yesman Green did a nice job of sticking with McLean, making that a tough catch, but that's a catch that the freshman, the talented freshman, would have loved to have made. First third down of the night for Florida State, who was 7 of 16 the other night. They try to hand it to Corbin, or no, Treshawn Ward, number 8, plunging to the left side. He's going to be short at the 44. Rick Norvell was aggressive last week on fourth downs. He's leaving his offense mm -hmm. on the field here with the fourth, and it looks like about four. Yeah, they lost a couple there. Milton a quick snap and a quick throw taking the deep shot. It is dropped by Helton. Keyshawn Helton was wide open here at the near side. Yesman Green had no chance if Helton catches it. Kenzie Milton dropped a couple of dimes on that on that drive. One to Malik McClain, this one to Keyshawn Helton. 
He gets turned scot-free in the secondary. He had a couple of slants and then a spade out of the slot. Keyshawn Helton is not able to bring it down through the smoke, and that is a, a drive that ended with missed opportunities for Florida State. And now Jacksonville State will scrimmage from its 44-yard line. Look on McKenzie Milton's face. He knew he dropped a couple of dimes. Yep. I mean, the one to Helton was right there, and one to Malik McClain was right in the breadbasket. So here is Zarek Cooper going to work. 31st career start for Cooper. He's got a chance tonight to become Jacksonville State's all time leading passer. First down give, Josh Samuel around the right side. Picks up about six toward midfield before he's shoved out. And Wes, going back to that fourth down call, I actually like Mike Norvell going for it there. Yep. Because it's early in the game, so whatever happens, you should be able to overcome it. But also, he had the play. Like, he had a look that he wanted. So I, I like Mike Norvell being aggressive. But you know, I played for a coach that went for it on fourth down all the time. So. <laughs> I was ready to say. I'll add to that, yep. <laughs> One back, four receivers. Second down throw, and whoa! Ahmad Edwards was the intended receiver, and Sidney Williams dropped the hammer. Sidney Williams getting his first start of his career in this game because Brendan Gantz out. And Derek Cooper's got to let this thing go quicker to not give the safety the time to break and blow up his receiver. Third down, five to go for the Gamecocks. towards the sideline. Florida State showing like they're going to play man-to-man. -man. Mm. Snap to Cooper. Knowles trying to get there. And Cooper going to step out of bounds back at the 46. Pretty good pressure. Kalen Deloach angles him out of bounds. It looked like Kier Thomas off that left defensive end spot, though Roddy had collapsed the angle for Zarek Cooper. He certainly did. Jermaine Johnson was making his way there on the right side as well, flushed Cooper out of the pocket, and it's one of those uh, quarterback sacks that uh, it's a little bit on the offensive line. Some of it's on the quarterback running out of bounds on the last scrimmage, but. Here's Travis J. to take the punt of the Aussie Jack Dawson. What pretty kick inside the 10. Jay's going to let it hit, and it takes a turn in front of the goal line at the north end of the stadium where Jacksonville State downs it there. So Florida State will be backed up. Each school has had it once so far here in Tallahassee. 51-yard punt by Dawson. Well, they've come back, sat through a bit of a rain shower, and they're ready to go tonight in Tallahassee. He did magic at Memphis. Yeah, he did a great job, and he'd have had more American championships if it wasn't for his quarterback now, McKenzie Milton. Yeah, Milton, <laughs> good point. Sailed the pass over Andrew Parchment and complete on first down. A little quick, quick action. Nobody there to defend Parchment. Yeah, and the, the cornerback was about 12 yards off. McKenzie Milton just wanted Parchment to sit it down. I don't know if that was a miscommunication or Milton just sailing it a little bit. I think it looked like it was a little bit of both the way Milton reacted. So it's second and 10, Florida State's second possession starting from its three. They ran eight plays, turned it over on downs and plus territory in the first drive. Here's Milton now escaping to his right. Cuts it loose and the catch is made. McLean, that'll be a first down, I believe, at the 14, and it will. Ahead of Malik Feaster. Well, it looked playing like, in his 31st career game tonight. It looked like, Wes, at the line of scrimmage, uh, you had McKenzie Milton telling Malik McClain to go on a go route and then you get off coverage so he had to sit it down a great scramble and you have Jordan Travis in the game now too, West mm. in the backfield with McKenzie Milton all right there's Travis in motion Milton fumbled the snap the ball is loose Jacksonville State Florida State finally comes out of there with it my goodness Cameron McDonald the tight end finally with the loose change Thing looked like a pinball bouncing around off of feet and body parts and hands and a little bit of everything. Now we'll see Jordan Travis in the shotgun. McKenzie Milton split out to the bottom of the screen. Florida State lucky to come up with this one. Jacksonville State going to pay any attention to Milton. McDonald moves in motion. McKil Milton on the line. Here at the boundary. And here goes Travis. 
20. Slides down. He'll be shy. Well, right at the first down mark at the 24, ahead of Nicario Harper, the OBC Defensive Player of the Year a season ago for John Gross. So Mike Norvell told us yesterday, he gave us a wink and a nod when we said, hey, just put both of those quarterbacks on the field together. He said, oh, well, you know, second series, mm. we might have that open. And sure enough, both of them on the field. Yep. Milton to his right, sidearms it here to the near side. And that is caught, and that's Kentron Poitier, redshirt freshman from Coconut Grove, Florida. Now, I, I like what they're doing here with Jordan Travis. You had him coming underneath as the shovel pass. Now you have him split out to the bottom of the screen. And look, Jacksonville State can't just treat him like a quarterback because if you toss it out to him, he can go. So the portier catch. And here is Travis taking it to the left. There's a flag down. No gain on the play as the Gamecocks rallied with Chris Hardy. Holding number 75 offense 10 yard penalty repeat second down Gary Patterson the referee tonight is assigned by the Atlantic Coast Conference penalty on Dylan Gibbons who you saw left the ball game late last Sunday night against Notre Dame but those were cramping issues and back in there tonight you're going to see Gibbons in the middle of your screen he's just trying to get a reach block on Chris Hardy holds him up a little bit and that's all it takes Boy, Roddy, Mike Norvell and Kenny Dillingham done a nice job. There's a lot going on in this offense in the first two series. Oh, yes, there is, because Jordan Travis had the option to throw that one. Now you got McKenzie Milton to the left of Travis. He's taking the snap. Travis fakes the handoff to Milton. Now Travis is going to cut it loose downfield. Parchment, the intended receiver. There were two Gamecocks in the neighborhood, but it falls incomplete for the Kansas transfer. Green and Jemison there for Jacksonville State and did a nice job parchment looked like he had a step on Jamari Jemison a little bit of a tug there that's the uh, that's the ninja games but Jemison able to make up the ground track it down Yesman Green also coming over there it's good that you get Eric Woods ninja games hey, right you know just a little tug on the hip it's yeah not, nothing that the referee is going to call <laughs> not unless they see it no not even if they see it you know third down 15 Milton at the wheel. Here comes some pressure from his right. Now a back-footed throw into the Florida State bench. George Steele collapsed down to press on Mackenzie Milton. Yeah, you're going to get Yesman Green coming off the left side of the line as well. As he was coming from depth, it ends up being late. Yeah, you were right, actually, Wes. It's George Steele coming off that edge. Able to get... Mackenzie Milton off his spot, rolls out. Milton wisely throws it away. And two possessions, this offense has gotten something going each time, but then the mistake, the drop passes, the penalties, put you behind and force another punt. Mastromano to punt it away. Juan Charleston to ask for and make the fair catch at the 38. Breaking the action in Tallahassee, no score. Such a fixture, not just at Florida State, but college football legend. Yeah, he was in Florida State with the Bobby Bowden signature on the back of their helmets as well this season. And only right that uh, we pay homage to Bobby Bowden throughout the year. No question. Zare Cooper's got Pat Jackson with him in the pistol. First down give is Jackson and not much there. And it bounces it out to maybe 39, a yard or two. <laughs> Running backs for Jacksonville State, Josh Samuel and Pat Jackson, run pretty hard. They're going to make it tough on this Florida State defense throughout the, the game. Florida State showed a lot of physicality up front, though, especially as you got later in that Notre Dame game. Let's see if that continues here today. A clear Jackson out of the backfield. Cooper wants to throw. Now up in the pocket, trying to get away from Jermaine Johnson. Takes a shot on a ball intended for the tight end, LaShawn Jarrett. So it brings up third down, Larisha. Seven and a half to play. Third down coming for Jacksonville State. To the top of your screen on the line is Jermaine Jackson, number 11. He's lined up with Michael Shaddix. The right tackle. 
That was a tough assignment a week ago. John, Jermaine Johnson just got pressure. Let's see if he can do it again here on third down. Cooper to throw. To the right side, it is caught. Ahmad Edwards, a great catch across midfield to the 49 with Miko Dotson hanging all over him. It's a 12-yard gain. Shaddix does a nice job on the line against Johnson. Z and Zarek Cooper gets the ball out quick. Miko Dotson draped all over him. And Ahmad Edwards able to make the play. Redshirt sophomore. Second team all Ohio Valley Conference last spring with 17 catches and three touchdowns. First down and 10 just over the midfield line for Jacksonville State. Cooper on the handoff to Michael Petway who cuts it back upfield and down to the Florida State 42 yard line. Daniel seven on first down on the little sweep with Michael Petway right Jacksonville State starting to get a little momentum. Petway only needs a seam and be able to find one. A nice gain on first down. There's John Gross, 53 year old native of Asheville, Alabama, went to Jacksonville State, now in his eighth year coaching the Gamecocks. Pistol again. May try and sneak Jackson through, flag down as he picks up the first down to the 37. See what we have here from Gary Patterson. Holding number 69, offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Traylon Brown starting at uh, left guard tonight. Redshirt freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, who played eight games for him last spring. Drawn a tough assignment with Robert Cooper lined up right over him. Cooper tries to get the spin. I don't know about that one. Maybe it happened on the back of the jersey, that one. Looked okay to me. Maybe you see another angle. Maybe, maybe another angle. Maybe there's something <laughs> I'm missing here. Wes. Second and 13. Jackson tries to bounce it away. Got around the edge. There's a flag. That'll be a hold on your Majesty Sanders against Jermaine Johnson. That one was a hold. Yeah. That one. Big 75 in the white. This one's out there for the free world to see, Roddy. It's, this is one where you can say, I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but you stepped out of line. <laughs> Gary Patterson to tell us. And then, boy, do we have a nugget for you folks. A lot of discussion about this. Yeah. Holding number 75, offense, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Before the game, we found out, Roddy, that Your Majesty Sanders' middle name is Highness. Yep. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because of course it is. I mean, that is that is all American, all name team, right? Oh there. yeah. That takes that's that's Heisman Trophy of college <laughs> football <laughs> yes, names. Yes, it is. That's what it is. Yes, it is. And we got a false start on Your Majesty Highness Sanders. Uh, Your Majesty is going to have to go to the to yep. the bench. Michael Shaddix will replace him. By the way, hat tip to Jacksonville State Sports Information Director Josh Underwood. Always great to see Athletic Director Greg Seitz. And uh, you can see he's just it's getting That's a to tough it. start. Yeah, it is. I mean, look, you're in Doug Campbell, and having been here personally at night, it is a different environment no matter who you're playing or what the situation is. Just got to calm down, especially when you've got Jermaine Johnson on you. Here's the give on second and 28. Jackson slides up to the 40 yard line. Well, here's our college football lineup next week, right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Syracuse took a tough home loss today to Rutgers. They will host Albany starting our triple header presented by Subway at noon. Roddy Larish and I'll be at the Horseshoe on the West Campus at Duke to see Northwestern's visit. And then Dave, Tim, and Kelsey will be in Chapel Hill amongst the Pines for Virginia and North Carolina. And there's an incomplete pass to Jackson. And that will bring up fourth down for the Gamecocks. Jarvis Brownlee in coverage. Jackson will stay 28 yards of offense, 25 penalty yards so far. Well, John Gross is going to be disappointed with that possession 
because the penalties really killed them. They had it. They had something going there. Crossing midfield, had a lot of momentum. Then back-to-back -back holding penalties put them behind the sticks. After five plays with all the penalties, Travis J will watch that punt hit right around the Florida State 30, and it will be touched up there. 4.27 to go first quarter. Still no score at Doe Campbell on a Saturday night. Enter the game, she was just shocked because she knew it was happening now. She has been his nurse for the past three years and has lived with him and cared for him. And she said it's been a beautiful blessing to see her son and his dreams come true once again hitting that field. Well, here is McKenzie on first down. Darion Washington on the far sideline. And Teresa Milton. Uh, it was a beautiful piece this morning on game day, Roddy, that Andrea Adelson narrated about just the journey and the doctors involved, the orthopedic folks at UCF, and Dr. Levy at the Mayo Clinic. I mean, just a phenomenal, phenomenal journey that Mackenzie Milton has been on. Larisha, a thousand days. Just, I mean, it doesn't seem like a number when you talk to Mackenzie Milton, does it? They no, just, it, it doesn't. was a journey. It was definitely a journey. And like I said, his mom, she has been there the entire time. They actually still live together here in Tallahassee. Well, Teresa has Mackenzie hands to Toa Feely here. Jacksonville State able to kind of get some. Leverage inside there by the pushback of Umstead Sanders. Defensive end. Big stop by Jacksonville State. And look, as, as physical as as Florida State was a week ago against Notre Dame, well, six days ago and less than a week. Yep. Jacksonville State has really matched that for most of this early game. We're nearing the end of the first quarter. I think uh, Florida State fans getting a little, little on edge about this game still being tied. Oh, Two Aussies punting here tonight. Mastromano for Florida State. Dawson for Jacksonville State. Here's Charleston fielding the fair catch at the 20. And Roddy, this is kind of what Mike Norvell was talking to us about yesterday, right? The emotions of a game like this after you come off that, you know, last Sunday night, everybody's kind of, you didn't get the win, but here's Mackenzie Milton and he's, he's feeling it. Yeah, just a little bit of frustration. Pointing at his offensive line, pointing at his teammates, frustrated that they weren't able to get that third down. And uh, Wes, something, look, you are never going to hear me talk about a punt, especially a punt that ends in a fair catch unless something goes crazy. But that punt, Alex Mastromano punted it left footed, giving everybody in the ACC something to look at because he is a right footed punter majority huh. of the time. Okay. Here's Cooper off the 21. And he'll pick up a yard, maybe. Let's let's go back to this, Roddy. It's the only time in my life, my broadcasting career, I've ever asked for a replay of a punt. But Mastromano, usually the right footer, comes out and hits a pretty good one with the lefty. And look, John Papuchis, the special teams coordinator, told us, hey, he can do this. And we want to get it out there because it makes you prepare differently when you know a guy can punt both left and right footed at 135 yards. Well, that tape will keep special teams guys up at night. Well, it'll keep punt returners up at night, too. Mm -hmm. Play fake by Cooper. Second and nine and a deep ball as he gets clobbered, and it is incomplete. Looking for Damon Philyall Johnson, the transfer from Duke, who's got great speed. Boy, but Zarek Cooper paid for this on the front end at the bank. Yeah, he did, but Damon Philyaw Johnson can absolutely fly. Look at Cooper just waiting for it, waiting for it, gets hammered. And this one, you gotta bring this down, big fella. A great double move on the corner against Jarvis Brownlee. Got him open. You gotta finish the play on the road in Death Valley. So here is Cooper on third and nine. Two twenty to play in the first. Cooper going to tuck and run. It's got plenty of room. First down slides shy of the thirty five. A third and nine pick up for Jacksonville State. Keeps the drive alive ahead of two minutes. Florida State's in man to man coverage downfield. All the defensive backs 
backs are turned. There's no linebackers in the middle of the field, and Zara Cooper's not going to win the 100 meters, but he doesn't have to mm. when there's nobody in front of him. Wise decision by the quarterback to pick it up with his feet. So ball at the 33 for Cooper and Jacksonville State. Their third possession of this first half in a scoreless game, and Cooper tries to get away from the trouble and cannot. Florida State crashed it. Dennis Briggs, the first guy to get there, and then Derek McClendon helped out as well. Take a look here at Jermaine Johnson on the right side of your screen, up against Michael Shaddix. Just bull rushes him, converts speed to power, drives him right back into the quarterback, forces Eric Cooper up. That's exactly what you do. You take off up field like you're going to try and speed rush. You drop your head, drive your hands into the deep uh, offensive tackle, to put him in the quarterback's lap. Pistol set on second down and 14. Straight ahead, this is Samuel breaking through and will be close to the first down at the 43. It'll be enough for the first down. Get a big sack on first down at second and 16. We're able to gash you right up the middle. You see the block coming from the right side of your screen. Creates a hole for Samuel and fumbles down for the first down. It's been a pretty sloppy first half for Florida State, I would say. The drops, the penalties. Defense has allowed some yards as well. Well, this Jacksonville State team, of course, came in here a year ago, Roddy, and actually led, what, 14 nothing in the first half. Yeah. Before Jordan Travis kind of came in and led the Florida State charge. Here's a throw on the backside. That's Jason Jones, a freshman from Birmingham toward midfield. Jones, a top 30 prospect coming out of Birmingham, caught four balls last spring. And is on the back end there of a throw from Cooper to get him to midfield, and that will be the final play of quarter number one here in Tallahassee. Well, Mike Norvell was worried. Two snaps of it. Roddy, I'm not sure he's happy with the next two possessions. They dominate kind of its, they got 69 yards of offense. They've had the ball less than seven minutes of the first period. Meanwhile, Jacksonville State's picked up some momentum here. Yeah, Jacksonville State has. They started to move the football, and that turnover on downs, two dropped passes on that drive. Here is the sweep with Petway, and into three garnet shirts he goes. Travis J, one of those guys. Amari Gaynor, who seemingly plays that field linebacking spot about as well as anybody. And now very quickly, Jacksonville State to the line with third and two. Florida State's got to get lined up. And here's the keep for Cooper. And Fabian Lovett brings him down, but Cooper got the first down to the Florida State 45 and possession alive here early second period. Yeah, it looked like they were running a midline option and optioning off one of those two inside guys. I actually think it was Fabian Lovett. Hmm. Lovett tackles the ball carrier. Cooper wraps around, is able to get the first down. Yep. So here is Cooper with three to the field. Cuts it loose, coming back here to the near side, and that got batted away. Renardo Green, who Adam Fuller, the defensive coordinator, told us yesterday has had his best week. Stuck a hand in to bat this down. And I actually think he decided too soon to bat this down. If he just takes his hands and runs to the football, that's a pick, Wes. Yep. But in his mind, he sees the ball and plays it safe. He surprised himself with that break, and you see Travis Jay, I think it was, telling him, one of his teammates on the sideline telling him, pick the ball off. That's going the other way for six. See the tight end Brown, the Tennessee transfer in motion. Here's second in the full. He'll hand the ball straight ahead, and Samuel got hit right in the backfield as we check with Larisha. Well, guys, I had the opportunity to talk to Zarek Cooper, and I, I asked him about his time at Clemson because we know he transferred from there in 2018, and I asked him about that quarterback room being that he was amongst some of some great quarterbacks there, and he told me it was an unbelievable experience to, to be with guys like Deshaun Watson and Kelly Bryant, and some of the things that he was able to learn, especially from Deshaun Watson, was truly how to be a collegiate athlete, a real college football player, and a quarterback. Well. He's done a phenomenal job for John Gross in Jacksonville State. Comes into tonight with 11 games in his JSU career of better than 300 yards and picks up third and the full there on the throw to P.J. Wells. Down to the 21 as Jacksonville State keeps the drive alive. 
Jacksonville State did a nice job of burying the tempo there. Watch the defensive line as it snapped. They get a little bit of a late jump. It's almost no pass rush. Nice delivery by Zarek Cooper and a good catch on the back end by P.J. Wells. Wells twisted Miko Dotson around hey, on the great. ground. First and 10 outside the 20. Here's a quick toss trying to get Samuel to the edge. Bouncing through traffic inside the 15 and finally shoved out of bounds across the way. I would have Dotson came off so he'll have to come out for a play and less as electric as this place was a week ago. The loudest roar we've heard all day is when Mackenzie Milton was introduced as the starter. They have not had a lot to yep. cheer for in this game. Sort of a nervous energy going on as Jacksonville State's inside the 15. Yep. And the Gamecocks have hit second and third, second and third down long plays, right? Yep. Thirteenth yep. play of the drive coming up, and now a timeout going to be taken by John Gross. Early second period in the Gamecocks among FCS schools, and here is Cooper who needs 35 yards to become their all-time leading passer, trying to put him on the board first here in Tallahassee again. Quick throw here to the near side. The catch for Petway and knocked out of bounds inside the five. First and goal from the four. Plus, they have done such a good job early in this game of scheming up their guys open against the man coverage of Florida State. The time he just gets sort of a natural rub against DJ Lundy. See Petway in the slot. Lundy's going to be defending him. That sort of natural rub he tries to get out. That one actually zone coverage. Petway's able to find it, settle down, and catch the football. 11 yard throw. Puts him at the four, first and goal. Samuel in the backfield with Cooper. Three receivers left, one to the right. Here's Cooper on the keep. Bangs to the one, and the gold helmets arrive to push him back. Lundy and Gaynor lead the charge for the guys in the Garnet jerseys. Have to wonder how much the experience of this Jacksonville State team had last right. year coming into Florida State leading by 14 points at one point in the game how much that plays into the confidence that they've gained over the course of the first 19 minutes of this football game well employ a tight end to the left snap to Cooper give is Samuel he'll break to the left and score Josh Samuel into the end zone for the first points of the year for Jacksonville State with 11.08 to go in the first half. It's really a, a beautiful drive by Jacksonville State, and Zarek Cooper in particular delivered on some big second and third and longs, used his legs, was able to eventually get the ball in the end zone. Really nice drive by Jacksonville State. 15 plays, 79 yards, 649. Point after is good. John Gross's team's got the lead. Play 79 yards, six minutes and 49 seconds. Time of possession has belonged to the Gamecocks so far in this first half. First two drives, Roddy, three yards. They had 79 yards on that drive. It's a statement drive by Jacksonville State early in this game, figuring out how to move the ball against this Florida State defense. Now the onus is on Florida State to answer. Corey Wren is deep with Ja'Kai Douglas. There will be no return. Florida State scrimmages from its 25 and let's take a look at our Bojangles Big Bow moment. Roddy. Well look Florida State needs to establish the run game like they did last week. Jay Sean Corbin you're going to see him running the counter here. Backside guard and tackle both pull. You get the guard with the kick out Dylan Gibbons and then 52 Robert Scott gets a hat on a linebacker just enough to get Jay Sean Corbin into the secondary and he takes care of the rest West Kyle Hamilton chasing him but there's no need because Jay Sean Corbin's got reservations for six <laughs> Florida State needs to get back to that well the best drive of the night for Mike Norvell has been the first drive since then it's been a lot of frustration for his Knowles Jordan Travis back at quarterback now to start the possession off the 25. And the give is to Corbin. And he will go to the line of scrimmage. And that's it. It's the exact same play we just drew up. It's the counter. Those two guys on the left side, Scott and Gibbons, leading around. This time, nothing there. 
It's actually on the backside. Darius Washington at left tackle. Jacksonville State doing a nice job muddying things up. Second in the full 10. Travis, quick throw to the backside and offline for Parchman. And the first kind of real unsettling murmur out of this <laughs> crowd here tonight at Bobby Bowden Field. Uh, look, uh, reaches that, the playing field. That was that was a poor throw by Jordan Travis to set up this third down. Question: What does Florida State go with here? Not really been able to find anything consistently in the pass game since that first drive. Five on the line for the Gamecocks. They bring three. Travis going to cut it loose. Helton, the intended receiver, and it's overthrown. Covered in the secondary, Ewell Gowdy was there for Jacksonville State. Florida State is 0 for 4 on third downs, and that's two consecutive three and out possessions by Mike Norvell's offense. Florida State did a nice job of picking up the blitz. Jordan Travis up to go to the slot fade that was really well covered by Jacksonville State as well. Both guys talking to the head coach here, Roddy. We saw kind of a celebratory mood Sunday night. Yeah. This looks to be a little bit more of a one-way conversation. Well, Jordan Travis frustrated with that drive. He knows he missed the throw on second down. That would have made it a much easier third down. Norvell probably telling them what the plan is at quarterback from here on. Mastromano right-footed. And Charleston. Whitney have not been on the same page. Quarterback and receiver not there. It dropped snap. They actually got away with this one and recovered it. But then this is the last third down. Just an overthrow by Jordan Travis. It has been a story of Florida State not being on the same page throughout the early part of this game. And Jacksonville State holding the football. They try to go on a slant that time. Incomplete. Trying to find Isaiah Montgomery. Six foot red shirt. Oh, it is a catch at the 45. Montgomery might have taken it off his shoe tops. It's an incredible catch. I mean, he had defender draped all over him. Yep. So Montgomery, on a walk on at Tennessee two years ago, who's transferred to JSU. Here's a toss, and this is Pat Jackson getting to the far side, and enough. Pretty close to another first down. Knocked out just shy after a nine yard game by Sidney Williams. Florida State needs a momentum play here, Wes. A ball out, interception. Yep. Big sack. You got to look to some of your leaders. We've talked a lot about Jermaine Johnson and a little bit about Keir Thomas. Thomas exited the game, hasn't come back, so it's Jermaine Johnson that's got to go make the play at this point. Meanwhile, Zarek Cooper. Straight ahead. Jackson tried to bounce it outside and ends up in the loving arms of Jermaine Johnson. That is a really nice play by Jermaine Johnson. He peeks inside when the running back ducks in. You see the bottom of your screen right there. Watch him engage. Yeah. Shoves the lineman off, just keeps him at bay with that long arm, the spin move to make the play. Now they come back to this near side and going to pick up the first down. And that's Jackson again. Run a lot wider that time towards Sidney Williams. Out of the secondary, Amari Gaynor also down there. So first and 10 at the 43. Under nine to go, and the Gamecocks already in front. The number 17 team in the FCS polls this week after their 31 0 loss to John Gross's good friend Bill Clark and UAB. A week ago, Wednesday night in the uh, Crampton Bowl at Montgomery. Here's Cooper. Quick throw across the middle, and that's caught. PJ Wells. No, Juan Charleston. Beg your pardon, 19. Hanging on shy of the 30 to the 31. These Jacksonville State receivers have not been afraid. They've gotten one on one coverage. They have won their matchups, made plays. Zarek Cooper looks sharp. He did not look sharp last week, Wes. Yep. Coaching staff talked to us about the fact that there was some rust there. Had not played in a year, didn't participate in the spring. But that rust seems to have been shaken off. He's starting to get some confidence. The throw to Charleston, by the way, puts him over the top as the school's all-time leading passer. Now here's a handoff to Jackson. He slides to the right side. And going to pick up about nine yards before Shaheen Brown makes the tackle. So Zarek Cooper has become Jacksonville State's all-time leader in passing yards, 7,653. 
Congratulations to that young man. What a career he's had since he got on campus. Mm -hmm. Second and short for the Gamecocks. Cooper going to keep and just plunge for the first down. Gain of about five toward the 17. Kalen Deloach, the linebacker, makes the play. For those of Florida State fans not overly familiar with Jacksonville State, although they played last year, I mean, this is one of the best programs mm -hmm. in FCS football. This is a program that made it to the quarterfinals of the spring season before John Gross and his crew lost to Delaware in a close game with their fourth string quarterback by the end of the game. John Gross has built something yep. at Jacksonville State, something that is obviously been sustained over a long period of time and now trying to add points to a seven nothing lead here with under seven minutes to go first half. Gamecocks have got to be feeling pretty good. Cooper floats it toward the end zone and just beyond the reach of Michael Petway. One on one coverage again Jamie Robinson on the coverage and it's a really nice route by Petway stems him in and fights to get back over the top out to that corner. Cooper just about a yard off maybe less than a yard a foot off from connecting with Petway. Second in the full 10. So Michael Petway goes off the field here is Cooper in the pistol. Second and ten. Handoff near side. Ball out. Recovered and picked up by Florida State. Sidney Williams tripped up before he got to midfield. Pat Jackson is down on the play. There's a momentum play for the Florida State team, Roddy. There it is. Just what the doctor ordered. And a great hit by number 55, Derek McClendon. Squaring up Jackson. Jackson drops the football. And what a play by Zarek Cooper on the back end. So Sidney Williams, the recovery. And we'll step aside. First big momentum shift for Florida State, trailing 7 0. Pat Jackson, the running back, to bounce it right into the loving embrace of Derek McClendon. Sidney Williams picks it up and uh, cannot overstate enough how good a play that was by Zara Cooper on the back end to bring him down. Knowles at their own 47. Here's Milton Long throw to the backside of the play, and that is Jordan Wilson, one of the two big tight ends making the catch. There's a flag down, though, in front of the Florida State bench here on the near side. And Mackenzie Milton says it's against Jacksonville State. Back to the pass, personal foul, face mask, defense number five. Penalty is 15 yards, uh -huh. previous spot, automatic first down. I'll trust Mackenzie on his observations next time. I don't know if he had to lobby all that much for that one. Yesman Green grabbing the face mask on the back side of the play. <laughs> John Gross is like. That happened way over there, guys. Yeah, how'd you even see that? The ball was over here. Yep. Fourth penalty on the Gamecocks, 40 yards. Florida State, the big moment to play on defense. Now you get the penalty. You got to come out with a touchdown on this one. How about right now? Maybe you take a shot, yeah. If you're Kenny Dillingham, do you go up top here? Malik McLean's in the slot. They love his verticality, his ability to go vertical and get the football. They're in a good position for it. Why not? Here's Milton on first and 10 now from the Gamecocks 35. Straight ahead, Treshawn Ward bounces it outside. He's got five, got seven before he is helped out of bounds by Nicario Harper along with uh, Ewell Gowdy. Mike Norbell could not talk glowingly enough about Treshawn Ward. This is a guy that just has worked his tail off. He was on scout team for seven weeks mm. last year. He's earned his spot and he's gotten better and better. Yep. Second down in short. Give it to Ward again. Stays on the line and gets across the 25 to the 24. It's a first down a tackle made by Gordon of Jacksonville State. They haven't taken the shot towards the end zone West but I like Florida State going back to reestablishing the run. 
this is where they should have the advantage, especially as the game goes on. Mike Norvell's teams are always good at running the football. I don't like them going back to it. Here's Milton looking to throw. Sets up. Parchment the catch. 15, 13, and pushed out at the 11. Jamari Jemison knocked him out of bounds after a 12-yard throw from Mackenzie Milton. Mackenzie Milton had a couple of different options there. He had Parchment down low, but he also had Cameron McDonald up high on the corner route. I just love the communication. It seems like after every play, every throw, Mackenzie talking to one of his receivers. And DJ Coleman, the junior from Atlanta, All-America at FCS level a year ago, is down for Jacksonville State. So they tend to him. Mike Norvell visits with Mackenzie Milton who makes his 34th career start tonight. His first at Florida State after coming back from a 1,000-day break after an injury at UCF, almost three full years of football, Roddy. Yeah, and let's not forget, before this guy got hurt, we, took, we talked so much about the recovery. We don't talk enough about what this guy was before he got hurt. Top 10 finisher in the Heisman Trophy voting twice. Right at UCF was one of the best players in college football. He's not quite back there yet, but let's take a look at exactly what McKenzie Milton was when he was at UCF. Mike Norvell got an up close and personal look having been at Memphis, but this was a guy against Mike Norvell's Memphis teams that consistently broke their hearts in the American Championship games over and over. To throw it deep, obviously had great touch on his passes, was mobile as well could do it with his legs and his arm. And there was just something magical about him. Things just went right when McKenzie Milton was on the field at UCF, and so far at Florida State, yep. been a lot more of the same. Well, you see the numbers, the passing numbers just exploded in 17 and in 18. You're talking about 79 touchdowns total in those two seasons. Eighth and 17, sixth and 18. And by the way, while Coleman is able to jog from the playing field, let me just say this, and a hat tip to our colleague at ESPN.com, Andrea Adelson. She has documented Mackenzie Milton's comeback, Roddy, at various stages. And the work she and the folks at ESPN.com and the folks that helped produce the game day segment today on this young man, it's just phenomenal storytelling by our people. It is. It, it absolutely is. They've done an excellent job. We've got some of the best people. Andrea, one of the best. Yep. And this has been one of the best stories, one of the best recoveries for both McKenzie and his family as well. Yep. Jason Corbin's come in with Milton. Too tight set for Florida State here. Just ahead of five to play in the first half. Knowles trailing a touchdown. This is Corbin. Left side. Touchdown. know if that's a cheer of excitement or a cheer of relief from this Florida State crowd but either way they're excited to see their Knowles get on the board Florida State how about them going under center a little handoff off the left side off tackle play Jason Corbin's able to get in the end zone second touchdown of the year for Corbin seventh in the last two seasons Fitzgerald for the point and we're tied with 501 to go in the first half Well, Dylan Gibbons put a little road work in here for Corbin. Yeah, he is. He's going to line up on that left side of the line. You're going to see him wrap around the tackle. Throw a nice block. This little kick out block on the end. You get the down block by Jordan Wilson on the linebacker. Safety, Nico Harper. Nicario Harper gets caught up. Deshaun Corbin has a. Uh, as the garnet and gold carpet laid out for him to the end zone. Well, the fumble, Roddy, yes, comes proves back to, be to huge. Yep. yep. Proves to be huge. I mean, Jacksonville State fumbles that ball well into plus territory. And good on Florida State for being able to convert it into points. Well, and to give you an idea, the Knowles, 53 yards in five plays in 90 seconds. They had 59 yards in their first four <laughs> drives. So Mike Norvell's got a little more steam in his stride here with 5.01 to go. 
And his team in Jacksonville State tied. Now he's got all three timeouts left as well as we wind down this first half. Kick away from Parker Grothaus and there'll be no return by Petway. Don't forget tomorrow Sunday, you know what that means on ACC Network? Sunday best. That's exactly right. We get you cranked up at 12 noon Eastern. We got top 25 field hockey for you from Winston-Salem. Number 24, James Madison, 14th ranked Wake Forest. Then at 2 o'clock, pivot to women's soccer. Then it'll be nice at Coral Gables tomorrow. South Florida and Miami. Right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. You know what they say about the app, Roddy? I don't. One app, one tap. Oh, didn't know they said that. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty big drive for Florida State on defense. I mean, it's a huge momentum swing if you can force a three and out or force a quick punt, give your offense the ball back with plenty of time to go down and go in the locker room leading. Defense sparked the Knowles with the turnover. Here's Cooper on the keeper. Well, he thought about it. Now going to make a back foot throw. What a catch. Ahmad Edwards came back for the football on a designed run, Roddy, for Zarek Cooper that he had to bail from. I don't think it was a design run. I think Zarek Cooper just saw the linebacker clear wow. out and decided, all right, I'm going to take off. And then when it got clogged up, he said, you know what? Never mind. Let's throw this ball. I think Cooper adjusted on the fly because the receivers are running routes. But Cooper couldn't quite get out of there. So he backs up and throws the football, but Kalen Deloach, the linebacker, went out with the running back. There's no linebacker in the middle of the field. 14-yard throw, 428 to go, tie game in this first half. And that is Samuel hit right at the line of scrimmage. And stepping through is Robert Cooper, 6'2", 338 from South Gwinnett High School in Atlanta. I'm gonna push back on that partner. I don't think a Which three, part? 338? 338. No, I don't think 338 steps through anything. I think that's a stomp or a burst or something like I don't know. Uh, stepping through makes me think 170. I don't know about 338. Second and nine, nonetheless. Under four to go. Regardless of the adjective. <laughs> Cooper in the gun. Wants the throw. Now will launch downfield and overshoots Petway. All right, now here's Cooper again, Roddy, stepping through. Oh, sure. Then he's, he's stepping Cangelosi through as well. And Cangelosi <laughs> held on for dear life on that one. Jacksonville State finds itself five of seven on third down. Big Coop comes out. And Fabian Lovett replaces him. You got Briggs and love it. Like right there in the middle of the line. Here Thomas back in number yep. four to the bottom of the screen. And Cooper checking to the sideline and now we'll call the timeout. John Gross runs down there and says we need to punch timeout. it. Jacksonville State. That's their second timeout. Thirty second timeout. So third down and nine. Coming up at the break, the PNC Bank Halftime Report. We got the full crowd waiting on you. Jordan Cornett, Eric McClain, Mark Rick, EJ Manuel. Hurricanes in Appalachian State tonight in South Florida. Pittsburgh and Kenny Pickett go to Rocky Top, Roddy. Better put some respect on Kenny Pickett's name. Yep, and get the big win. All that coming up at the half, brought to you by PNC Bank. And don't forget, following our coverage in Tallahassee tonight, Roddy, huddle after dark. They got the huddle boys working this weekend. Emac called a game last night. EJ called a game today. They and they got them working late. Calling yeah. a game doesn't get you out of late night. Nope. Man. Nope. Working. Double time for the huddle. There you go. Fellas will be in Chapel Hill next week for Virginia, North Carolina. Beautiful Keenan Stadium. Excellent. Right down the road from where we'll be. Yep. One of the South's oldest rivalries next Saturday night in primetime presented by Geico. This third down is massive for Florida State. They haven't brought a ton of pressure at Derek Cooper. They played a lot of man-to-man -man on the back end. See what they decide to go with. Doesn't look like they're going to bring a lot here. And we get a flag or a timeout. Florida State punched it. Prior to the snap, 
Timeout. Well, defensive Florida coordinator State. Adam Fuller is on the field. OC Kenny Dillingham is upstairs next door to us. And so Mike Norvell punches the timeout. He'll have two left with 3.39 to go. And you mentioned that it didn't look like they were going to turn the volume up very loud right there. Well, Zarek Cooper's heard him a couple of times when they have. And they've gone man to man on the back end. They brought an extra man. And it's vacated the middle, and Cooper's been able to hurt him with his legs. That's kind of forced them out of that pressure package. Had to contend with his legs a little bit more. Remember, it was a 7 0 game. Jacksonville State was in plus territory. And then Florida State got the momentum play. DJ McClendon, Derek McClendon able to force the fumble. It's Sidney Williams picking it up, and while he wasn't able to take it to the house, it did force or did get Florida State the ball back. Jayshon Corbin able to finish it with this run off the left side. Yep. Up until that point, Jacksonville State had really kind of withstood the opening flurry and controlled the balance of this first half. Here's Cooper giving ground, flips it down the field, and incomplete for Petway. He was challenged in the secondary. Was that Kevin Knowles, 26? It sure was. It was in coverage. Well, that time, Florida State did bring pressure. They bring a blitz off the edge. And Travis Jay, I believe it was, and then Kalen Deloach coming up the middle. Able to create, able to speed up that clock of Zarek Cooper and force the incompletion. Keyshawn Helton waiting on the punt. And Helton will play from the 19 and get knocked back immediately. Jacksonville State covered it nicely. Gamecocks with Colby Fuqua. Don't forget, next Saturday, triple header of football. Started high noon, presented by Subway. Albany and Syracuse from the Dome. Orange looking for their second win against the Great Danes. And then at 4 o'clock, Pat Fitzgerald brings Northwestern. And the former Clemson quarterback, Hunter Johnson, to Wallace Wade Stadium to meet the Blue Devils. And then at 7.30, ACC primetime football presented by Geico, Virginia, who was a big winner today over Illinois and number 24, North Carolina, who's playing Georgia State tonight at Keenan State. The Great Danes, huh? That's it. That Virginia-North Carolina game is going to be great. Brendan Armstrong is swinging yep. to start this year. Five touchdowns, 400 yards today for the Cavaliers and the win over the Illini. Milton with an hour to throw it. McKenzie backs up. Now he will throw it into the bench area incomplete. You got to give a lot of credit to the back end for Jacksonville State on that one. I mean, you said it. He could have made a sandwich, written a handwritten letter saying thank you to his offensive line for that much protection, and then licked it, sent it to the post office with the number the amount of time that he had. And that back end of Jacksonville State held up the entire time. So now the pistol for second down and 10. 3.16 to go, tie game, Florida State with two timeouts. Here's Milton pushing to the right, back across his body. It's caught, and that is Darion Williamson and a first down to the 34 if the play stands. We're going to have an ineligible here. Roddy? Ineligible downfield, number 55 offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Dante Lucas who's been involved in the rotation in that offensive line tonight for Coach Norvell. And that flag came from the backside from the head linesman, so it, a few things it could have been. I'm going to look at Lucas. It's a play-action pass with a design rollout. Yeah, Lucas well downfield. So back to the 13. And under three to go. Milton again for the pistol. Hand off straight ahead and Corbin to the 20. A nice run by Corbin to get him into. We've got an injured Jacksonville State player on the play. And they got to a much more manageable third down as uh, the wave is broken out here. Something that we did not see last year, Wes. We didn't no, have no. fans in the stands, so no waves last year, but. So, can't get a clear look at the number as they tend to 
a Jacksonville State player. It'll be third and about eight with two and a half to go. It is George Steele, the corner. And you see 14 there walking with Steele. That is Jeremiah Harris, who is uh, unfortunately out for the remainder of the season, dislocating the elbow a week ago Wednesday night against UAB. And John Gross and Kelvin Sigler, the defensive coordinator, spoke of just how devastating an injury it is for Harris because of his leadership and all the things he did for the back end of what Jacksonville State's doing. But to Harris's credit, he still wants to make as much of an impact as he can, even though he can't play the rest of the year. And you see he's fairly active here tonight. Third down and eight. Snap to Milton. Gamecocks bringing four. Milton going to cut it loose. And overthrows Helton, who looked like he got boxed up with Yule Gowdy going down the far sideline. It's an excellent job by Yule Gowdy. As soon as Helton breaks out, he just kind of cuts him off. Watch. Helton's going to step on his toes, but he can't quite get around Gowdy. Gowdy slows enough of his momentum, gets in phase, gets that elbow in the hook, his elbow in the crook of, of Helton's elbow, and is able to force the overthrow. It's a really nice play mm -hmm. by Yule Gowdy. Force that overthrow. And now Jacksonville State's in a position. 215, one timeout. They get the ball first in the second half as well. Florida State, three of six on third down. You see Quan Charleston from Linden, Alabama. One return last week against UAB for just seven yards, and this will be a fair catch. Ooh. Little juggle at the 41. Still a pretty good spot for the Gamecocks to get it cranked up here with just 208 to go. Ronnie, did you return punts once? Yeah, and I, I wish I could have caught it this well. Whoa, that one. I, look, catching punts is about the hardest thing to do in football. So uh, as long as you secure it at the end, you've done a good job in my book. So seven all game, 2.08 to go. The Gamecocks get the ball to start the second half. Do you try to get aggressive here? and get the double dip Roddy going into the break and getting the ball to come out. I think you do. You're on the road against an FPS program. You've got some momentum. I don't think you play it conservative here. Yes, if you throw it a few times, you may give Florida State the ball back, but at least with this field position, you'll be able to pin them deep. And your defense has played well. Off the 42, here's Cooper. Quick snap, looks right, and that's intercepted. Ball is picked off. It looks like Kevin Knowles came away with it. Are they calling it incomplete? I think so, Wes. Yeah, I think Gary Patterson, the referee, just announced the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. And Zarek Cooper gets away with one. It's a really lazy throw by Cooper. Doesn't set his feet, just tries to sidearm it. We'll get a look at this. Yeah, clearly incomplete. Previous play is under further review. So for the first time tonight, we're going to have a little review, Roddy. Come on, Gary. You had it right the first time. <laughs> Just stick with it. <laughs> this one should be quick, though. I mean, we saw one look, and the ball clearly bounces. That's all you need to see. Yep. So it negate the second turnover by Jacksonville State in this first half. Again, the throw is really lazy by Zara Cooper. But you see the ball hit the ground right there. And then again, when he's going down to the ground. I will just offer this to you. I think you're right. Stranger things have happened. No, there's no way. There's no I, way. I don't think there there's is no either. Okay. But, and in fact, the headset's off quickly. Yeah. So that means. Another review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. Yep. Second down. Yeah. Worth taking a look at. Worth taking a look at, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Despite your urgency to end the first half. Well, look, I am, uh, you will. There's not a lot of replays that I am advocating for. I understand. So here we are, second down and 10 now with 2.04 to go. Jacksonville State, one timeout. Florida State has two. Cooper wants to throw again. Launches to the far side and 
Is that caught? It is ruled a catch by Isaiah Montgomery, but he hit the ground at the 44. So the, um, I, the umpire came in waving his hands like it was incomplete, and another poor yeah, throw they're, by they're going back to the 42 here. Yeah, that ball hit the ground too. Oh yeah. And look, Isaiah Montgomery's wide open. Step into the throw and get him the football. So now third and ten, 155 to go. And here's the other part about this: John Gross is not forcing Mike Norvell to burn yeah. the timeout. Now, now, I, now you run the football. And try and trade as much. Previous plays on the further oh, review. back to back. If you've got back to back reviews on your late night ACC Network bingo card, mark it off. <laughs> Who doesn't? John Gross. I think he realizes it'll be third in the full ten. Uh, look, I, I like I like John Gross deciding, hey, we're gonna throw a couple of short passes, try and get some yards and get this drive going. Zarek Cooper's just gotta execute. I mean, the first one he doesn't set his feet, just kind of slings it outside arm. And then this one, I don't know if it got tipped, but it surely came out awkwardly. Right. And it clearly hits the ground. Right. The way it's moving though, I, I I'd have to imagine it got tipped. Or it slipped out of his hand, one or the other. Well, the crowd is seeing the replays here as well tonight at Doe Campbell. Just out by our camera crew, didn't we? Absolutely. Well done, folks. Kirby Kander, our director tonight. Alex Marmartino, our producer. Our ACC Network crew in Tallahassee. With Roddy Jones, Larissa Harris, West Durham. We wind down the last 155 of this first half. Mike Norvell, <laughs> he too is now thinking, this is taking a long time for an incomplete pass, isn't it? Yeah. Good and look at it. He's seen it on the video board much like the rest of this crowd has here tonight. There we go. Put two minutes on the clock, and the clock will start on the snap. That may have been. It took so long. Put right. five seconds back on the clock. So is there a Cooper? Over there on the far side around Coach Gross and tie game under two Roddy and we're staying loose. Okay. Staying loose, that's what I would call that. If I'm I'm Jacksonville State, you run the ball here. Obviously you're trying to get the first down. Not sure I wouldn't clear out the backfield and go with some sort of quarterback draw, although you've got Josh Samuel lined up to the right of Zara Cooper. One to the boundary, three to the top. Cooper wants to throw, eludes the first, won't get away from Jermaine Johnson. I think Jermaine Johnson had enough of one of his legs to finally get that one to the ground. Yeah, I actually don't hate the play by Zara Cooper either. That's a situation where you don't want to throw the ball away. It forces Mike Norvell in Florida State to take a timeout. You opt not to run the ball. You don't have the complete pass. Just hang on to it, get as much as you can take the sack to pull that Florida State timeout. Now you have an opportunity for your special teams to pin them back deep. It's a nice job by Jermaine Johnson of uh, sort of undercutting the quarterback. Second sack of the night. Also the second three and out of the night for Jacksonville State. So 152 to go. Keyshawn Helton's going to wait on the punt of Jack Dawson. And now Florida State they can recapture a little of the momentum. They have a chance to take the uh, lead to the locker room. Yeah. You're counting on your special teams here to give you, give your defense the best position possible. High punt from Dawson. Helton at the 24. Breaks away from the first wave. Cuts it back. Keyshawn Helton, 40 at midfield and finally taken down at the 44 yard line of Jacksonville State with 138 to go. It's about the worst case scenario for Jacksonville State. You get a quick three and out, pull only one of the timeouts that Florida State has, and then you give up a big return on special teams. How important is it in the game? Well, Florida State goes from being pinned inside their own 25 to in positive territory across their own 50 with a minute 38 in a timeout. And here comes Mackenzie Milton. 42 yard punt, 31 yard return by Helton. Corbin is with Milton in the backfield. 
Each school with a timeout left to go before the break. Let's see how many of the Gamecocks bring here. The answer is two. Milton to his left, sidearm throw caught. Parchment out of bounds at the 36. It'll be a yard shy of the first down. Dropping, playing coverage. We still allow Parchment to catch the ball and get out of bounds. Basically three spies on McKenzie Milton though on that one. Yep, sure were. Second down and one. A minute 32 to go. Snap to Milton. Four this time. Down the seam for McDonald and overshot it. Nicario Harper in coverage. I'm sure Harper didn't have a chance to pick that ball off. Yep. The overthrow. He kinda, was looking for McDonald. Yeah, he looked for McDonald to make sure that he had an incomplete pass, but watch one. It's going to drift over. You can pick that ball off. Yep. That's one for each school, Roddy, here Absolutely. in the first half. So now third and short. Milton. And Time out. Jacksonville Station. Interesting. Third and one. John Gross may be out of timeouts. So here with uh, 88 seconds to go, let's check with Arisha Harris. Well, guys, both Jacksonville State and Florida State's band will perform together at halftime. They are performing a 9-11 tribute as we are um, honoring those, the nearly 3,000 people who lost their lives on the 20th anniversary of that unfortunate event. So we'll see both the marching Southerners who are marching with 498 this season, which actually makes them the largest marching band in the nation. Again, they will be performing alongside the marching Chiefs which is the band for Florida State. All right, thanks. 490? 498, Coach. Wow. Yeah. How many buses is that? Several. <laughs> I'm going to put down several. <laughs> I'm going to go with several. It's a pretty safe bet. Yeah. 53 on a bus. I'm not very good at math. You mm -hmm. know that. Ball at the 36 now. This is third and one. Florida State has one timeout left. Yeah, and that timeout just taking gives Florida State a chance to either call two plays or talk through the strategy if they get the first. They're going to run it with Corbin straight up the seam. Corbin inside the 15. First and goal if it stands. There's a marker in the secondary. You're either going to get a face mask or a horse collar on that tackle. Legal substitution, defense, 12 right. players in the formation. That penalty is declined. First and goal. Now there's another marker at the eight. Now that might be the face mask. And this is not at all what John Gross wanted. No, I mean, if you're going to play with 12, at least stop them. Legal substitution, defense, 12 on the field. That penalty is declined. During the run, personal foul, face mask, number five, defense. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. First third down conversion for Florida State comes with 119 to play. What a job by this Florida State offensive line. You see Baby on Johnson there in the middle opening it up. And then you get the face mask on the back end. I'm not sure I saw the face mask. It looked like more of a horse collar to me, but either way. Well, you get the personal foul. John Gross knows it. Trying to get personnel on and off. First and goal at the four. 119 to go. Knowles with a timeout still. Boy, Corbin's look good again here. Six carries, 64 yards, a touchdown. That was a 27-yard run. Corbin's taking a snap in the Wildcat. Yep. Milton goes wide to the right. Almost out of bounds. Quick snap to Corbin. He'll roll to the right. Got a block. Falls forward for a yard. And Mike Norvell has not punched that timeout. Clock will keep moving with just ahead of a minute to go. Yeah, you've got time. You don't have to ha call the timeout now. You've got time to get down with a little bit of urgency. Get down and run another play. Now the process with Mike Norvell and Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator, seven different people involved in the play calls. Is that the number we were given yesterday? Yeah, yeah the resources at Florida State allowing him to get a few more people calling plays, yeah. signaling plays than uh, when he had previously. So here is Corbin again, a little Wildcat set. Snap to him. He'll keep it again to the right. Runs into a stack and rolls out of it toward the two. Inside toward the one, perhaps. And now 25 seconds in a moving clock. It's the exact same play. They're going to try and get up and 
run another play, not calling the timeout. Because they're not calling the timeout, I'd expect it to be a run. They're under center. Milton from under center. Play fake. Milton to his right. Marker down. McKenzie throws. Caught. Touchdown. Florida State. Wyatt Rector, the tight end. Offside, Jacksonville State declined. Touchdown. It's excellent management of the clock inside the 10 yard line. I thought it was fantastic by Mike Norvell, not panicking, calling the timeout. You know you have opportunities to get up, run the ball. They could have opted to run it there as well and then punch the timeout. They didn't get in. They go play action, roll Milton out. He ends up throwing the touchdown pass. Excellent job by this Florida State offense. Sure is. And here is the point after. It's good. Flag down. Gamecocks were offside on the play. The point will stand, and with nine seconds to go, Roddy. Defense, number six. Penalties declined. Extra point, good. McKenzie Milton throws a touchdown pass here at the close of the half. They go under center, and Wyatt Rector is in that fullback spot. Turn around, fake the hand off to Corbin, and it's McKenzie Milton scrambling that opens up Rector. Ends up securing it right in the front of the end zone. Once again, it's the run game that really got Florida State going on that drive, but McKenzie Milton and Wyatt Rector finish it. Yep. So the third tight end kind of in the order, if you will, for Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator, pays a dividend on the back end of the throw. Mike Norvell's got to feel a whole lot better about the last five minutes than the first 25 minutes. I would say so. Florida State offense has gotten something going. And he talked to us about just not being sure about how his team was going to respond. He said, look, a lot of people have been telling us after a loss, you guys are so good. You did such a great job. And he was honest. They hadn't been hearing a lot of that the past right. few seasons. So how would they respond? A little bit of a slow start, but the end of the half, certainly didn't, much better. Didn't you think his candor, though, about losing and not winning was also yes. pretty refreshing? He was very clear to us. He expects to win football games like that. It doesn't matter if it's right. Notre Dame. It doesn't matter the number attached to their name. They got to get to the point where they're winning those games. And there'll be no return for Jacksonville State, who's out of timeouts with nine seconds left. So. I suspect this will be a touch of the knee, and then we'll send you to the PNC halftime report with Jordan Cornett and the fellas. Plenty to cover tonight. 14 ACC games, 13 today. Duke a winner last night over North Carolina A&T. I'm going to have to tune in there and find out what's going on with uh, NC State out there at Starkville. Now it's 21 to 3, but. One thing they will be able to talk about, my boy EJ will be happy. Florida State with the lead going into halftime. It wasn't always pretty in the first half, but ultimately you have more points than the opponent. Well, there it is. Touch of the knee and off to the break we go. All the thunder for Florida State comes in the last 501. Pair of touchdowns. Corbin a 12-yard run and then going to break. McKenzie Milton to Wyatt Rector. Stay tuned. Jordan Cornett leads our coverage of the PNC Bank Halftime Report. Next, Florida State by a touchdown at the break. He cashed in right before going to the locker room. The McKenzie Milton to Wyatt Rector touchdown pass, and John Gross's team will get the ball here to start the second half, but trailing a touchdown. So the first 25 minutes, not really to the liking at all of Florida State. And they're going to bring it out here to the near side and Yule Gowdy works his way toward the 25. So Zarek Cooper will go back to work here. The one turnover in the ball game, Roddy looms huge. It was it ignited Florida State who was getting ready to probably trail two scores at Jacksonville State kicked a field goal at worst touchdown at best. Yeah, the turnover came at a time when this Jacksonville State team really had all of the momentum. They were in plus territory, as you said, in position to kick a field goal. And Derek Cooper really did a nice job in the first half. His numbers aren't eye-popping, but dished the ball out, did a lot with his legs as well. Some good adjustments were made at halftime, and this Jacksonville State offense can rekindle some of that momentum. 
First down play Cooper wants to throw back underneath to Jacob Jenkins the tight end and he will pick up about four almost five toward the 30 before he got tripped up three tight ends LaShawn Jarrett's the one that's got the biggest upside Sean Brown a Tennessee transfer and Jacob Jenkins this young freshman from Hoover who played nine games last fall slash spring in that kind of truncated FCS season that many of these schools had at three catches a campaign ago. Second down and Cooper wants to keep it Jermaine Johnson and Robert Cooper wrap up Zarek Cooper. It looked a little awkward. It looked like Zarek Cooper wanted to pitch it to the running back. A quick toss but Josh Samuel thought oh, this is a quarterback keep. Yeah. Sets up a third and short though. Jacksonville State lucky to get a positive play. Yep. Gamecocks with five of nine in the first half. Here's a quick toss trying to get to the near side and Jermaine Johnson shows you the open field athleticism Roddy he can give it to you off the edge and that time he tracks down the running back Samuel thought it was interesting we asked Adam Fuller is Jermaine Johnson the big time leader on this defense he said yeah a little bit but he's not super relatable because he's big he's long and he's fast and you saw it there Amy mm. is uh, having been in a locker room with some of those guys that are that he is absolutely right those guys you can't relate to the things those guys can do Three and out goes Jacksonville State. Second time in the last three possessions. There's Travis J on a fair catch, and Florida State will scrimmage from its 21 yard line. Larisha Harris. We're in the I second half. With head coach John Cross, and he told me that they had a lot of opportunities offensively in the first half, but those self inflicted wounds are what really hurt them. And I asked him, What's your message to your team as you head into the second half? And he said, Basically, it's what we've been focusing on all week alignment, assignment, execution, and communication. He wants to ensure that his guys effectively communicate and finish in this second half. Well, they had. A lot of that going for him in the first 25 minutes of the first half. And now here's Mackenzie Milton who took the Knolls on a touchdown drive to close the first half. Off the 21. And this is Corbin finding the second level. 13 yards to the 34 and a first down. Wow. If they get this cranked up to go with Mackenzie Milton's awareness in the throw game, Roddy. I mean, it's going to be dangerous. Here's a quick snap. Somebody lost their hat. And Corbin will get to the 39. It looks like uh, Jackson Luttrell. There's Big Jackson out of Rainbow City, Alabama. And a flag went down at the same time. Let's see what Gary Patterson has for us. Number 92 defense helmet came off. There is no flag because he continued to participate, but in the immediate action, no foul. Second down. There you have it. Excellent explanation by Gary Patterson. And in talking about Jay Sean Corbin, Wes, uh, he is a guy that obviously transferred from Texas A&M and showed flashes towards the end of last season. Mike Norvell told us he had a devastating hamstring injury coming out of Texas A&M. Was never really full strength. We didn't get to see that last year. You can see the lateral quickness and you saw the long speed on that 89 yard run against Notre Dame 84 yards on 10 carries here's Milton trying to avoid the rush he'll get to his right there's a hold on Florida State McKenzie gets out of bounds into the bench area of the Gamecocks but all that's going to be for naught holding number 58 offense 10 yard penalty repeat second down 25th start of the night of his career for Devonte Love Taylor here tonight. Here is Mackenzie Milton's stat line so far. Huh. First touchdown pass in 1,023 days. Say, uh, hmm. you said it earlier, it's sort of the journey coming full circle. It's been an incredible journey for him and his family who have been there to support him, team around him. Yep. Good for him. Here is Treshawn Ward stepping through at the 40, first down. Be on the 45. Yule Gowdy might have saved a touchdown. 17 yard run. You got a Jacksonville State player down. But I like Florida State just going to the run game. And that is a gaping hole. Treshawn Ward has to make a man miss downfield, but 
The offensive line that really overs follow at CFP extra yard. We resume action and here is Ward and a marker down as he is brought down in the neighborhood of the 38 yard line but let's check the marker it's 16 yard run. Personal foul legal block below the waist oh. Number 75 offense 15 yard penalty repeat first down Dylan Gibbons is guilty here. This is some of your best analyst work typically the block below the waist. Yeah, well you know I'm familiar I've seen a to one or two of those <laughs> in my day. There's where the block below the waist is going to happen but I want you to watch Treshawn Ward as well. There's the block below the waist. Look at the quickness though from Treshawn Ward. The ability I, the footwork. I, I didn't really like that block below the waist call though. I mean that was four for 40 yards by the way for Ward. Yeah. Oh no, that's fourth penalty, 40 yards on Florida State. Beg your pardon. Here's the throw off the hands of the tight end, Cameron McDonald. Incomplete. This Florida State team had a number of times in the first half where they started to get something going, and then whether it was a drop pass right. or a penalty, sort of put them behind the put them behind the chains. Oh. It has been a maybe not quite dismal, but. Extremely inconsistent offensive performance from Florida State today. They have not thrown for 60 yards yet in the ball game. Milton to his right, looking, pumps, and now slips it up the field. There's another flag down as Malik McLean makes the catch at the 37. And another penalty against the Knowles. Marshall Clark. There's the Holding. linebacker. Number 55, offense, 10 yard penalty. Second down. That's on Dante Lucas, and the Knowles are going backwards. Buddy. Second and 35 coming up. You know, McKenzie Milton's going to go back and look at this play, and he's going to put that on himself. Malik McLean was wide open early on in that play. He didn't quite get back to it. Kenny Dillingham, the offensive coordinator there with the glasses, obviously doesn't like. Uh, don't, I've got the glasses on too. But obviously doesn't like the call. Wes is up here giving me a look because uh, he's broken out the glasses for the first time right now. <laughs> here we go. Second and 35. They're gonna hand the ball off, and here's Corbett kept his feet around the edge, 30, and took a man on and banged out of bounds by Jamari Jemison. It'll be measured just past the 31 yard line. 10 yard run. Kenny Dillingham, Larissa. Well, you were talking about teacher appreciation, and I had the opportunity to talk to Kenny Dillingham, and he told me that one person who helped him to that trans well helped him through the transition from being a player to a coach was a guy named Charlie Rago. Dillingham tore his ACL, and the Coach Rago came to him and said, "Have you ever thought about coaching?" And, and that's how he got introduced to coaching, and he's been in this position ever since, working as a coach. Yeah. And now at 31, one of the brightest offensive minds in college football. And all of that went down his senior year of high school. Right. He was saying, I, I, I can't coach. I'm in high school. And Coach Regal said, why not? Come on out, help with the football team. And you're absolutely right. He has been coaching ever since most of that time next to Mike Norvell, where they were together at Memphis before Dillingham went to Auburn. And then when Norvell got the job here at Florida State, Kenny Dillingham came with him. Florida State just two of eight on third down tonight, guys. Master Mono hammers it over Charleston's head. And will it check up the nose? Can they get there? They did. Heck of an effort by Florida State. All right, about five minutes in here in the third quarter, Master Mono's punt. Campbell touched it up, and then Ja'Kai Douglas actually downed it. It's a career best punt for Alex Mastromano of 65 yards. Roddy, it's 11 yards better than his career best coming in. Yeah, and an excellent effort on the back end. Well, it looks like, oh, looks like DJ Campbell's in the end zone when he touches this ball. Nonetheless, Jacksonville State will stay uh, on the one yard line, not get the benefit. Cooper in the gun. Play fake wants to throw pressure coming gainer. He slipped away and then throws offline. 
looking for Bill Yaw Johnson, the transfer from Duke. He did the pocket up. What I tell you during the break? He said that they would heat it up. The old Mickey Andrews Absolutely. tactic. <laughs> Get some of those hombres in there that hadn't played much during the yep. night. Let them go. Well, Amari Gaynor's played a lot. And he's, uh, he was coming off the edge. Oh, there it is. They snuck through. No, I thought for a moment that they'd given the ball to Samuel, or Jackson rather, and it was Cooper that kept it above the five. Yeah, once again, they opted oh. off of the three technique, the defensive lineman on the interior of that line. Watch Cooper. Pulls it at the last minute, actually options off the linebacker coming down. Pulls it and then is able to get the positive gain. Second down, give him a little breathing room here on third down. Yeah, DJ Lundy with got me and DJ Lundy. Oh, well, that's good fake. In motion, that's Edwards. And straight ahead with Jackson. No, they got it on the perimeter again and got the first down with Cooper. Or no, Jackson kept it, bounced it? What in the world? That one was confusing. Well, that one got me too. It looked like, like Florida State may have wrapped up the wrong guy. I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Jackson's coming across. He gets stopped up. DJ Lundy slams down the offensive lineman, and Jackson sneaks out the back door. But in the mass of humanity, it looked like Lundy brought down the running back, but the running back gets out and gets the first down. Wow, how about that? So fresh set of downs. Cooper, a quick throw to the perimeter and off the hands of Edwards. Brownlee was there in coverage for Florida State. Seen a lot of drop passes tonight, Wes, from both sides. Some of the ones on Jacksonville State side have been a little more difficult. That one pretty easy for Edwards. It's so much bigger when you're coming out of your own end zone and you've got these opportunities to get positive yards. You've already gotten a first down, so your number one goal is accomplished, right. giving yourself some room to punt the ball away. That really could have set you up nicely on second down. Touchdown lead for the Knowles, second in the full 10 here for Jacksonville State. Cooper will keep it this time and brought down at the 22. A gain of right at about seven. Sidney Williams, who's got the fumble recovery, and now we got a little pushing and shoving. And Extracurriculars. Jamie yeah. Robinson's got to be careful. I'm a little, I'm a little surprised there's not a flag there. There was some pushing and shoving. I think they took exception to the way that the tackle was handled on Zarek Cooper. He's trying to get up. Oh, yeah. Saw Sidney Williams kind of cross over him. Zarek Cooper Grable. doesn't like it. The yeah. offensive line certainly doesn't like it. Jamie Robinson comes and grabs one of the offensive linemen and pulls him out. That usually will draw the ire of the referees, but well handled by this uh, officiating crew. Third and three. Gamecocks are 6 of 11. Coming to the near side, Jackson won't get there. Florida State is running to the football tonight. Renardo Green, the free safety. Sophomore from Orlando was the first guy. He was flying out of the secondary to turn it back in. Didn't make the tackle, but forced running back back inside. Pursuit is able to make the tackle. Dawson's punt toward Travis J, who will make the fair catch at the 30 yard line. And we're halfway home in quarter three. We told you in the first half that Andrea Adelson's done a phenomenal job documenting the return of Mackenzie Milton. If you didn't see the full feature this morning on game day, here's a little brief touch for you. Back out on the football field. Moving pretty well. He's turned on the yep. Jets a couple times, coming around the corner. Yep. First may, down. Not, may not have the power steering that he used to, <laughs> but still has that mobility. Second down, 13. Ward lost three. And so here's Milton on the near hash. And slips it right across the middle. Parchment, another catch. This one at the 35. <laughs> Second, uh, third catch of the night for Andrew Parchment, who grew up in Florida, 
Cypress Bay High School down in Fort Lauderdale and then started his college career played 29 games at Kansas had 90 catches. There's a first down throw and that is caught by McDonald. And that should be enough for the first down. We've got another injured Gamecock on the play. Because of the injury we spoke of to Jeremiah Harris and that's his dad the defensive coordinator of the Gamecocks Kelvin Sigler. And uh, so a little bit of two thoughts there one the professional and certainly one the personal. Here is Toa Feely getting the carry on first and ten. In fact Roddy you remarked after our visit on Thursday with Jacksonville State that Kelvin Sigler just kind of glossed right over the fact yeah and yes Ben Green will go in to replace Jeremiah Harris and you asked him he was kind of oh no he's got you know good ability and you're like no wait a second that's your son right we, we had to <laughs> hey had coach to, and, and, and to kind of draw it out of him that's your boy right <laughs> like we're not off there yeah quick throw by Milton another catch by McDonald and that'll be a first down cracking to the 47 yard line of Jacksonville State but that that is a spot as you said that the Jacksonville State was already on him back up and you saw Cameron McDonald now coming off the field as well. Yep. I think he took a helmet on the arm. hand. Yeah. Excellent tight end. Whew. Sure is. Here's Milton now starting to warm up a little bit. That could be dangerous. This is the throw to the backside. Williamson the catch and he'll be measured to the 30 yard line of Jacksonville State right at about a 17 yard throw. The Florida State was taking all these shots deep in the first half. Now they've gone to the short, quick passing game. The passing game that, that I think McKenzie Milton is one of his strengths. I mean, can certainly throw the deep ball as well as anybody, but this short passing game, he certainly has command of. Here's Williamson, the catch flag down again. And ineligible is the call. Roddy, I, I got to be honest with you. First couple of weekends of college football. Offense. This has been the most popular penalty. call of them all. First down. <laughs> Seemingly, this has been called, and I don't know, point of emphasis perhaps, maybe so, but I've seen this called everywhere, yeah. coast to coast. I, I, and I'm not blaming them. I'm just. No, I, I guess it is a point of it. Maybe it's just been a one of those sort of weird uh, occurrences that have just happened over and over, and the referees, the officials have been on it. Yep. Here's the handoff Ward trying to find an alley and that closed up pretty quick. So it'll be second down and the full 15 from the 35 after the penalty a moment ago. Been a long drive for Florida State. He's starting to wear down or trying to wear down this Jacksonville State defense. Here's Milton again four man pressure. Catch is made here to the near side Malik McLean incomplete is the call. Well Florida State averaged just under four yards of play in the first quarter since then they've been averaging about six yards of play. Now they've had a couple of defensive efforts. Fumble recovery by Sidney Williams the punt return. By Helton. And they're looking for another score here. Corbin's return to the backfield with Milton. To Milton, quick throw, middle of the field, caught and juggled Wilson and incomplete. Wilson could not hang on. Big lick from Nicario Harper. And a marker down again. Legal formation, offense, number 58, not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard, they're going to go decline it, Gary. <laughs> that penalty will be declined. There you go. Fourth down. That's it. Or State's kind of in a weird position where you're, you're going to trot out the field goal kicker. It's going to be about a 52-yard field goal. So they're going to get the right tackle, Devontae Love-Taylor. Mm -hmm. An excellent job of separating Jordan Wilson from the ball by this Jacksonville State defense. And, and you're going to get a 53-yard attempt. Yep. Remember, he made the 50-yarder, right? 50 and change the other night. Before the penalty was marked off after Mike Norvell challenged it. Middle of the field for Ryan Fitzgerald will be a career best. And it's on the way, and it is good. How about that? 420 to go in the third. And Fitzgerald just 
Stroked that one beautifully, Ronnie. And you see the number of guys coming up to him and patting him on the head. Everybody knows what this young man went through at the end of that Notre Dame game. Calmly knocks it through the uprights from 53 yards. That is an absolute bomb. And it had some more on it, Wes. Like, yeah, it, it could have been good from 56, 57. Yep. So Ryan Fitzgerald makes it a 10-point lead. It's a 10-play. 35 yard drive for Florida State in 312. And the Knowles push it to a 17 7 advantage. Now, there are little things that happen in a ball game like this every once in a while that you think, hmm, I wonder what that will do for us down the road. That's got to help Ryan Fitzgerald for sure. It absolutely has. And, and one of the unique things about Florida State is we, is we get to talk to John Papuchas, the yep. special teams coordinator. He kind of told us that. Told Ryan Fitzgerald, look, you made the pressure kick. You made the kick when we were down. And then obviously boomed the one from 50 yards before the challenge. But his ability to respond, I'm sure, is something that everyone's excited to see. So the kick will not be returned. Jacksonville State will got, go from its 25. All right, let's roll it back to last Sunday night. Florida State got the ball first in overtime. Fitzgerald missed the 37-yarder. And then... You know what, a couple of times a year ago, Notre Dame needed Jonathan Doerr to come through, and he did. And the other night, he hit the game winner, 41-38, after the Irish gave away the 18-point advantage in the second half. That was a performance that gave Florida State a lot of momentum, and Bill Fitzgerald didn't hit, that, hit the one the other night. The potential is certainly there for him to have still a great season. Here's Cooper. Ball about throw. Now we'll keep and get three yards before he is tackled. Kalen Deloach, the linebacker from Savannah. Let's check with Larissa. The recent strong safety we saw for Jacksonville State, Yesman Green, who went down. He was just carted off of the field and headed into the FSU locker room. There's no designation on his status right now, but I'm working to get that information for you guys. All right, thank you. That would be a tough loss for Jacksonville State, who's run for 100 yards on 31 tries tonight. Reason being with their injury already to Jeremiah Harris. And now you take Yesman Green out of the lineup and we got a procedure Practice penalty coming up All on the game. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Josh Wegener, native Iowan, who had 10 starts a year ago, the penalty. Yeah, they lose Harris and now Green. And Roddy, all of a sudden, you got a youngin' to go back there for next week when they play North Alabama. Yeah. And with this move now that Jacksonville State's made after a lot of success in the Ohio Valley Conference to as the Atlantic Sun Conference develops a, a football league and well, Greg Sykes was very insightful with us before the game talking about just the sheer geography of the league but North Alabama and Jacksonville State that'll be a thing Kennesaw State and Jacksonville State that'll be a thing Roddy all of a sudden you got a pretty good league of FCS football to look forward to. Yeah, and they're very excited about this move. Mm -hmm. Jacksonville State's been one of the most successful FCS programs, especially in John Gross's tenure. Yep. Your Majesty Sanders is the injured Gamecock on the play here. Eight FCS playoff appearances last 11 years. 2015 National Championship game appearance. They joined the Atlantic Sun in July after 18 years in the Ohio Valley Conference. And, of course, have had outstanding players. It is a school that presents an opportunity for guys. And, and look, we've talked about it tonight. I mean, just defensively alone, they've got transfers from South Carolina, Louisville. Um, they've got guys that started their career, let's see, at Clemson and Tennessee. Clemson, Tennessee. Yeah. Um, got, yeah, it's, it's, an, it's kind of a, an interesting Scenario: Nicario Harper, Southern Miss. You've got guys that have, have been at a variety of different places. Eric Cooper, we told you earlier, Clemson, Josh Samuel, Western Kentucky. It's that, but you know what it also is too, Roddy? Some guys in the state of Alabama who don't get that big offer, who want to continue their football career, and John Gross does a great job in developing players. Here's Cooper, quick throw to the near side. Samuel the catch. And... 
it back inside the original line of scrimmage, but it'll be fourth down. Amari Gaynor on the tackle. Well, they set up the screen, and Gaynor coming from inside out really makes his play. He's got blockers out front, just not able to be patient. And then Gaynor comes in a big lick by he and Travis J. Yep. Pat Jackson had to speed up his tempo because of Gainer's pursuit. Three and out for the third time, Roddy, in the last four possessions if you take away the meal to end the first half. And Keyshawn Hilton on the return. And Florida State will start from right around its 35-yard line. Well, Jay Sean Corbin the other night, a big touchdown run against Notre Dame, and he's been back on the attack here this evening again. He certainly has. This FSU running game really powered them today. It's been the most consistent part of this offense. The offensive line's done a nice job of opening up holes on the touchdown. This was a big run to set up another FSU score. Has it just been Jay Sean Corbin, though? You've seen clips of him in that highlight package, but Trayshawn Ward yep. has had his own. And this Florida State team, fifth in the conference in rushing a year ago, fourth in yards per carry a little go a year ago. Jordan Travis had a lot to do with that, but so did Jay Sean Corbin and the rest of his crew. Mackenzie Milton, play fake to Corbin, quick throw, intercepted. Coming back down the sideline is Jamari Jemison and is knocked out of bounds. And all of a sudden, Jacksonville State gets a sudden change. And the timing on this one, Wes, was just a little off. The break of the receiver was earlier than McKenzie Milton was going to throw the football into Parchment. It's kind of a blind throw back. You're trusting that the, that the timing is going to be right and the corner's not going to have time to break on that ball. Mike Norvell was talking to McKenzie Milton about it. So probably telling him, hey, look, take a peek at where the corner is because he was all over that route. Yep. Timing just a little off, though. Jackson in the ball game with Cooper. Interception the first of Jemison's career for the Gamecocks. First down give Jackson. And he'll get to the 29 before DJ Lundy shoves him down. Florida State's controlled this second half, but Jackson State goes down and gets a score here. Makes it a one-score game. This could get weird late night in Doe Campbell. <laughs> Cooper in the gun. Looking for another quick throw. Gives ground. Going to sail it out of bounds. Marker down as well. And a hold on the game cops. for both sides. It has been a sloppy offensive line play game. Five, offense, 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Number of holds, we've had some illegal formations, we've had legal man downfield. Right. Added a, a legal low block. A sloppy on both sides. Is, well, given that the Gamecocks played, what, 10 days ago, right? UAB yeah. lost in Montgomery. Florida State played six days ago. Here's Cooper. This is second and 17. Tries to sip it down the middle. It's in. No drop. Oh, my goodness. That was in the hands of Travis J. <laughs> Travis J was thinking about the return. They had a similar one last week. Akeem Tim dropped the surefire interception and Zarek Cooper just short arms his ball I mean, the receivers open the athleticism of Jay to get back to it is fantastic you just got to bring it in almost does <laughs> the elevation though I mean that was impressive yep Phil y'all Johnson the intended receiver so now third and 17 Cooper with a boot out from midfield, flag thrown, ball caught. It will be a first down, but it won't stand. The catch is made by Wells, but this is another hold on Jacksonville State, I believe. Holding, offense, number 84, 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. Jacob Jenkins on Jermaine Johnson. 
a, a tight end on uh, on Jermaine Johnson is a mismatch in Florida State's favor every time. Top of your screen. Yeah, top of your screen, just trying Ooh. to hold on. He gave his quarterback a chance. But that is certainly not the matchup you want if you're Jacksonville State and negates a really good third down pickup by Zarek Cooper. Yep. So reset for third and 27, Roddy. Cooper up to the far side and caught. Nope, out of bounds is Wells at the 28. I think simply trying to get to field goal range was the goal there. I don't, if you get the first down, great, but at least give Alan Karaljic a chance, right? Yeah. You, you, you got to keep him in bounds. It's a tight window, but it's a throw that Derek Cooper can make. And now Jacksonville State, after the turnover, going to come up empty handed. And Roddy, they're one for their last seven on third down after starting five of seven. You got to give a lot of credit to this Florida State yep. defense forcing the issue. Travis J will run away from the end over end punt. And ball's going to check up right around the eight yard line. That's where the Knowles will get going. And Tell you what, we've got another full Saturday of ACC football for you here on ACC Network. We'll start at high noon. ACC football presented by Subway. Syracuse will walk in Albany through the dome. Nice crowd today for the old Eastern battle between the Scarlet Knights and the Orange. Roddy Larish and I will be at the fabled horseshoe on the West Campus in Durham to see the Wildcats of Northwestern and the Blue Devils and Mateo Durant and then in prime time, presented by Geico, Virginia, and North Carolina. Brennan Armstrong today, 405 and five touchdowns for Bronco Mendenhall's team. Been swinging it through for over 300 in the first week, if I'm not mistaken. Mackenzie Milton goes to work, give his Corbin at the 10, took on a man at the 12, and will be stopped at the 15. Pick up a seven. Yeah, other winners today, Georgia Tech beat Kennesaw State. Pittsburgh, a great win at Knoxville. Wake Forest, a winner. Virginia Tech got a couple of touchdowns from Raheem Blackshear. It's been a busy, busy day with 13 games. And just moments ago, I think Miami was able to hold off Appalachia. Much to the chagrin of the uh, fans here. Yeah. Florida yeah, State when that was announced. <laughs> Left side, and this is Ward slipping through to the 20. I'll tell you what, I like the way he runs, Wes. I really do. There's power there. There's quickness. There's a desire to break tackles. So Treshawn Ward will close the third quarter. Night. On a Saturday night in the state capital of Florida, Mike Norvell looking for his first win of the season. Kenzie Milton first and 10 as we start this fourth period to a Feely flipped over just beyond the line of scrimmage. Been an interesting three quarters of play. The fumble that ultimately converted into the Corbin touchdown with 501 to go in the second quarter, Roddy, looms as probably the biggest play of the game. Yeah, I would say so. And really since then, it's kind of settled down into a little bit of a sleepy affair in the second half. Jacksonville State obviously with the big interception, but not able to convert it to points. Jay Sean Corbin has got 100 yards tonight. And Tofili getting the rock here will get it to the 23. Third down coming up. Tackle made by Umstead Sanders. Fifth year senior from Port St. Joe, Florida. Transfer from Gainesville to Jacksonville State. Florida State's been in has not really gotten into their tempo on this drive, going at a pretty easy pace. Mm -hmm. And some subs for this third down. Mackenzie Milton, 13 of 24, under 100 yards throwing tonight. Gonna look to break the century mark here. No, oh, little shake, little bank, and out of bounds at the 35. I don't know what you're talking about to power steering here, Jones. Oh, well, maybe he heard me. <laughs> That looked pretty good right there. Able to put a move on. How about this? I mean, a couple of years ago, they would have thought this was impossible, but what's wow. a move on Markel Benton? Plants on the bad leg. Well, you know what? 
They're both good legs now. It's just the brace play. There's the catch by Wilson at the 40. Falls forward for a couple of more. A little laundry for Mark Hill Benton on the run by uh, Mackenzie Milton. And then he comes right back and spins it to Wilson to pick up six. Jordan Travis certainly the, the quarterback that's more known for his running ability, but Mackenzie Milton pick him up and put him down a little bit. And with each run, it seems like he gains a little more confidence. Sure. Ability to do it, get out of bounds, or get down. And straight ahead, here's Ward bouncing to the near side. Turns the corner. Mike Norvell was pointing toward the south end zone. George Steele saves it from being even a bigger play. 17 yards for Treshawn Ward. Telling you what quickness in the hole this dude has got it. Give it a plant and a jump cut on a dime. Here's Milton. Play fake. Loads, throws, and Parchment got knocked down, or that was six. I think if he didn't tried to complete the somersault, he probably still could have gotten up and caught that. <laughs> McKenzie Milton aired it out pretty good. I Whoa, offensive pass interference. Interesting. Pass interference. Offense, number seven. 15 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Wow. Ronnie, I was watching the flight of the ball. Parchment, when we looked, was Doing a front somersault. And so the indication usually when that happens, you get defensive pass interference. We don't have a great look of it. Mm. But I'm surprised th that it went the other way. We have yep. being told that uh, that one was, was out of the view of our cameras as well. So here's Milton with the two tight end set. A little pump fake. Now a little sidearm number. And the catch by. Uh, That's Toa Feely, who steps out of bounds at the 48. Still second pretty long. We're trying to run a big quarterback power tight end pop pass, but McKenzie Milton got pressure right in his face and to get off his spot. And mm -hmm. Fortunate to have Toa Feely there waiting on the uh, outlet. You see three to the top of the screen. Toa Feely going to get the carry and drive it for a couple of yards to the 50, and now it'll be third and even 20 after Taji Stewart fifth year senior from Walton High School in Marietta and transfer from South Alabama makes the play. Here's Milton in the pocket again now launches and McDonald can't come up with it now we got a flag I think Milton was hit after the throw. Yep and here comes another one because this is Stewart again coming through traffic with Umstead Sanders as well. There are two fouls on the play. Personal foul, roughing the passer with targeting. Number 22, defense. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 22, defense. That's his first unsportsmanlike. The previous play is under further review. So they will review the targeting on Stewart. Quarterback throwing the football as a defenseless player. Whoa! Oh, yeah, absolutely. They got the wrong player. Number eight, Mark Hale Benton is the one that actually hits McKenzie Milton up high, so they'll correct that and I assume we'd get a target. That's a fairly long conversation with Gary Patterson and John Gross. And Roddy, you're covering one of this going to the break. It's Mark Hill Benton that hit McKenzie Milton, first of all. Yeah, it's eight that hits McKenzie Milton up high. But yeah, it's number eight, and they have announced it as number 22, Taji Stewart. Right. Now, he got the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty after this happens. That very clearly targeting. We got a ball move to the 20. Here's Gary Patterson. I think we had another one added on top of this. Yeah, there was the unsportsmanlike conduct as well. Mm. And but the question is, who has to leave the game? Markel Benton is leaving the field. Right. It looks like he's the one that's going to get pulled. Right. So there goes Benton. Second team all OVC a year ago with 69 stops, including a double figure performance in the playoffs. 
for John Gross. But remember, you you also did have the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Taji Stewart, which is why you got 30 yards of penalties off of that one play. Right. We're being told they were looking to see. Here's Gary Patterson. Correction. The targeting was on number eight on the defense. Number eight is disqualified from the remainder of the game. Number 22 had his first unsportsmanlike. He can, he can remain in the game. The 15-yard penalty for the live ball being forced, as well as a dead ball. First and 10. All right. Nice job by this officiating crew of communicating, getting it done. Here's the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Yeah, that's. Come on, come on. I mean, and that was a, that was a pretty dangerous hit. Those are the types of hits that you want out of the game, and then you can't do the Iverson step over. You can't. Eleven penalties, 115 yards, and here's the throw to the perimeter. Williamson inside the 10. First and goal. Fuquay the stop. Andrew Jacksonville State player. Step aside under 12 to go. They'll tend to another game. 11th play of the drive is a first and goal off the nine of the Gamecocks. Milton in the gun. That's Paul Feely coming into the backfield. We got movement. Full start, number 55, offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Tell you what, Wes, when Florida State goes back and looks at the film of this and sees all the mistakes, right? they will be equal parts disappointed in the performance and also happy that it happened this week. Because you do this next week against a really good Wake Forest team. Who does not commit penalties. Who does not commit penalties <laughs> and does not turn the ball over. Right. That's enough to get you beat. Snap to Milton. And trying to squeeze through at the right side. Toafili got hit and dropped by Tullis. Stevante Tullis, Richard Jr. from Dothan at the linebacking spot. You know, we knew coming into this game, we talked to Mike Norvell about it, that it was going to be a challenge for this Florida State team to block out all the noise, to get over the loss, the emotional loss, and also the pats on the back that came after it and have a good performance. They have not had a good performance, but ultimately, the win is what you want. Milton wants to throw the fade to the corner. Now we're going to reset to the near side, zip it to the goal line, and making the catch. And down at the one is Wyatt Rector again in traffic. Well, you were right. He wanted the fade to Andrew Parchment, but Parchment went and blocked Yule Gowdy, the wide of uh, the cornerback. So he decides to roll, and Florida State's Quick gonna snap. go fast. Toafili pulled down in the backfield. And that's Stewart or Tellus again. Beg your pardon. 28. Stevante Tellus with a nice play. They've also and again, I don't know how much of this is called, you know, if the first play's a catch and you move it forward, do you then jump into the quick huddle, quick snap routine? But, Roddy, that's that's a pretty good little trait to have for your offensive weaponry. Yeah, they can they can modulate the tempo as they're going to go for it on fourth down. They brought in some extra beef, and they're going to take a timeout. Yep. Down and goal from the three. 9.54 to play, and out of the Mike Norvell timeout, Florida State. Yeah, trying to push this thing to 17 points. You're exactly where you would be for a two-point conversion, so I would expect this to be one of states, one of Florida State's better two-point plays here. Milton, quick throw, right side, looking, and it is caught! Did they hold off for the touchdown, looking for a signal? McLean, it's called incomplete. Finally called incomplete with Deco Wilson. The previous play is under further review. In coverage for Jacksonville State. You'll see it with us. Such a bang bang play. So we're looking for a couple of things. One, does he possess it and control it? When does that happen? Two, does he get a foot down? He definitely gets a foot down in bounds. Right. And then does he complete the act of the catch through 
the ground. This is on the back of the defender. It looks like he has control. All right, this will give us a look. This is maybe the best one because he falls to his right here, right? So he's got the foot down inbounds with, I would call that control of the football. There's the catch. I foot. Does he control it all the way through the ground? No, he doesn't. And moves. So it's so incomplete. Rolled pass. In his waist. Yep. It takes the last. Pass. If we could get, uh, we can go back and look at that one more time. You'll see him fall to the ground, and it looks like when he lands, Roddy, he's got it, and then the ball slips on the hip, right? Right. So, so he has control here with the foot in bounds. Then you have to survive the ground, and There's he doesn't do that. The yep. ball hits the ground. It moves. And so if that had happened in the field of play and it doesn't hit the ground and you're able to reestablish control in the end zone, then that's a touchdown. But because it happens out of bounds, can't do it. I think it's a good call on the field. And I, uh, I believe this one's going to stand or be confirmed. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. It's, and it's, as you can imagine, not wildly popular here. But under the letter of the law, Roddy, that's incomplete. Well, the, the fans see he has the ball and gets a foot in bounds. Right. But that's not the end of the catch. You have to survive the ground when going to the ground, and Malik McLean doesn't do that. The ball moves, it hits the ground. He's able to kind of regain it on his hip, but that's the, the, the catching it in the end zone is not the end of the play when you're going to the ground on a catch. So Jacksonville State trails 10. Now Mike Norvell tried to get a timeout called and got it. Now. Is he going to challenge this? No, or he's just, no, he's just getting no, his. Yeah, yeah he's, he's just getting his ducks in a row. Yeah. Back to seven. Stay tuned after the ball game. Huddle after dark. Roddy, <laughs> Jordan Cornett, Coach Rick, EJ Manuel, Eric McLean. Full comprehensive review, discussion, and analysis of all 13 games today on the ACC schedule. Jacksonville State takes over. Mike Norvell burned a timeout. We got 9.49 to go in a 10 point game here in Tallahassee. And a whistle in the flag. We have had now start. 52. 19 penalties yeah. in the ball game. 11 on the visiting Gamecocks, 8 on Florida State. John Gross's team 11 for 105. I actually don't hate this penalty. You're just trying to get a little bit of a head start as an offensive lineman, try and cheat a little bit. Ultimately, that penalty cost you about a yard and a half. All right, it's probably worth trying to get the uh, trying to get the head start. I wouldn't be surprised if Jacksonville State goes with a hard count. Yeah, you're correct. It's, up. it's 101 yards, not 105, because they don't take the full five in the back of this ball. Here's LaShawn Jarrett to catch, and he is dropped at the goal line by Jamie Robinson. So Jarrett lost a step, maybe. Well, yeah. Sean Jarrett, they're excited about this youngster, by the way. 6'5", 200 from Warner Robins, Georgia. They call him a tight end. They split him out more. I mean, Florida State kind of told us, we're going to treat him like a receiver until uh, he sticks his nose in there with some of the big offensive linemen. I'd be surprised to see Jacksonville State rolls there and Cooper out. There's Cooper on a straight drop. Tries to fire across the middle and it looked like Petway went down. He was the intended receiver. Well, Adam Fuller's got to be pretty pumped up. The Florida State defense has allowed one first down in the second half. 202 total yards in this game. What this Florida State defense has allowed. And while well, early on, Jacksonville State started to get some stuff going. Only seven points on the board. This defense has been third down. Stingy. Yep. You hear the uh, penalty was declined. <laughs> Michael Petway not super happy about that. I'm not really sure what the argument is. It was an incomplete pass anyway. Right. 39 yards in the second half for the Gamecocks. Cooper trying to bail him out here. Another strong throw looking for Wells. Incomplete. Penalty will be on Florida State for pass interference, and it's on Jerry, uh, Jarian Jones. 
transfer from Mississippi State. Pass in the Defense, number seven. Spot foul. Automatic. First down. Jari and Jones is in great position, draped all over the receiver. And just at the end of it, it's a little off balance and panics. Grabs the shoulders of the receiver to try and get around to that football. Clear pass interference. And he probably didn't need to. I mean, that ball was going to be a tough one to catch anyway. It's not something you know during the throw, but still. Brutal penalty for Florida State on defense. It sure is. Would have gotten them off the field. Would have, yep. And it would have been a tough punt for Dawson, too. Under nine to play now. Cooper sacked. Wow. Jermaine Johnson was the first guy, and then Akeem Dent arrived. Fourth sack of the night for the Knowles. This was one of those where once the, once the dam broke, it was going to be tough for Zarek Cooper to get anything going. You're going to see Jermaine Johnson on the left side. Inside move. There was nothing Zarek Cooper could do, really, because you had pressure from the inside from Johnson and the outside from Akeem Dent as well. Roddy, a team that only had 10 sacks a year ago, has eight, and we're not quite through two games. Here's the throw, the catch, and the completion is to P.J. Wells and a first down out to the 32-yard line for Jacksonville State. Put it all back in that one play. Zarek Cooper moves up in the pocket and is able to deliver a strike. Comes up like he's going to run and just flips it out. They lose track of P.J. Wells. Frustrating. After you get the sack, I mean, it's frustrating to give up a big play like that. Under eight to go now. Cooper to work. Now back up in the pocket, slips out to his left. And, boy, he got hit pretty Cooper. good there by Travis J. Travis J., a guy that played safety for this team, really yep. played everything for this team other than corner in the secondary last year, but not afraid to come up and lay a blow. Zarek Cooper, not the quarterback that's going to slide either. I mean, come on. He's a big man, 217 pounds at 6'3". Second down and four after the six-yard gain. In motion, that's Ron Wiggins. Here's Cooper cutting it loose, and Phil Yall Johnson, the intended receiver, with the Duke transfer. And... A flag, flag has come yeah. in again. This one thrown from Deep right field. west of Tallahassee. Yeah, there you go. Holding defense number three. Ten yard penalty. That's Automatic. First down. Jarvis Brownlee. The crowd here is kind of at the end of the night <laughs> on penalties. <laughs> Both ways, probably. Yeah, no. I mean, it is. It has been sloppy, to say the least. Yep. The number of flags that we've seen, number of just drop passes. Look at we've that. Twenty-one turnovers. penalties, two bills. Yeah. It's been a busy night for Gary Patterson and this officiating crew. Yep. Be a heavy tape night for them. There you go. Cooper off the forty-eight. Quick throw and the catch made sliding up field is Petway. And he'll pick up almost nine on the first down play. John Gross's team keeps kind of grinding here a little bit with under seven to go. It's, it's a ten point game, but this is clearly the Gamecocks best second half effort so far. It absolutely is. Cooper another throw this time Wells at the thirty five. And Jay tried to strip him up as he falls to the ground at the 30. Gotten momentum, and they've been able to overcome some of their own mistakes. I mean, right. they've been able to overcome penalties. They've gotten some help via penalty as well. Yep. But they're able to go down and score here, Wes. I mean, we got to finish. Bill Yaw Johnson back to the formation at the top. Cooper going to loop it. And looking for the end zone and incomplete. Well offline. Phil Yaw Johnson, the intended receiver. Brownlee was trailing. He also had uh, Renardo Green covering. This defensive backs have done a good job on the double moves of Jacksonville State being physical and cutting them off at the top of the route. Phil Yaw Johnson a couple of times 
You're a receiver. You got to be strong through that. Expect the contact. Be strong through it. Right. Get, get on top of them and fight through that route so you can go and make a play. But you got to give credit to these Florida State defensive backs and their physicality at the top of these routes. Second and ten. Pistol formation. Cooper fakes the handoff, throws on the slant. Petway at the five, and he'll fall into the end zone. And there's a flag down. An eligible man downfield. Offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Biggest penalty of the night for Jacksonville State. Yep. It's an RPO, run pass option, and the lineman just gets caught downfield. You're going to see number 60, Zach Angelosi. Yeah, he's about five yards downfield. Wow. Negates a. By the way, Petway on the slant is a handful. Yeah, he is. It's really the first time they've run one of those. We haven't seen a lot of that type of RPOs tonight. Transfer from Washington State, by the way, into this program. Here's Cooper trying to find room, and there's Jermaine Johnson again. You mentioned that this Florida State team only had 10 sacks a year ago. I would say it's a pretty good bet that this guy, Jermaine Johnson, is going to have more than 10 this year, the way he's playing. You see the hands. Throws off your Majesty Sanders, is able to get around the edge, but kind of stuns him with the power, throws him by with the hands, bends the corner, and is able to get to the quarterback. That's really good from Jermaine Johnson. That's your Greg Rousseau package, doesn't he? Uh, <laughs> more physicality. Yeah, no doubt. Here's Cooper, back foot throw, broken up, and is it picked? Are they going to call it an interception? It is an interception for Brownlee. Jarvis Brownlee, the pick at the 28 and a half. Zarek Cooper throws this one off his back foot. He's not able to get much into it. He floats it out there, and Brownlee's able to come up with the interception. Zarek Cooper's not happy at all. He thought he got hit in the head. Oh, look at this one. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're going to review this for targeting. Kalen Deloach. Number 20 on the. Oh, look at this. All pops up. Oh, definitely an interception. Hey, okay, now. The question is do you get the targeting? Well, Derek Cooper thinks it is. Look, a quarterback releasing the football is a defenseless player, so you're looking for forcible contact to the head or neck area. And I think you got that. I think it was a high hit as we get a look at the interception. Wow. The bro. question is the question's going to be, Wes, is there an indicator of targeting? Which would be a launch from a thrust, Low the head. lowering of the head, attacking yep. with the crown. Well, did this ball hit the ground? You can't tell. It was called an interception on the field, so they'd have to have enough to overturn it. Now let's go back to the the front end of the play here. You can't really see it there. You see the hit is high. Well, Cooper oh, wants Cooper's it right away. For it. Yeah, yep. he knows. It's going to be interesting. You do get the lowering of the head and the crown. I, I think that's going to be targeting, Wes. I, I do. And that would take Kalen Deloach out of the first half next Saturday in Winston-Salem. Yep. One of the starting linebackers for this Florida State team. Yep. Because of the lowering of the head, I mean, hits him just under the chin with the crown of that helmet. I think you are, uh, I think you're going to get targeting here. Gary Patterson's at the monitor here. Here we go. We After got. further review, ruling on the field is a personal foul, targeting number 20, defense, with 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Number 20 is disqualified for the remainder of the game. So Kalen Deloach is out. And next Saturday in Winston-Salem in the first half at Truist Field, 
he will not be available for Mike Norvell against Dave Clawson's Wake Forest team. Yeah, that's correct. And, and again, that one is targeting because of the fact that he lowers and attacks with the crown of the helmet. Watch at the end of this. Quarterback's a defenseless player, forcible contact to the head or neck area. The indicator is the lowering of the head, the attack with that crown. So targeting Kalen Deloge is out for the rest of this game. Not only that, but it negates the pick. That's it by Brownlee. So here is Cooper at the 23 in a fresh set of downs. Still a two-story game, and Wiggins can't get cranked up. Redshirt freshman, local kid from Jacksonville, Alabama, the number two running back in the state, by the way, Roddy. 4A running back of the year after 2,800 yards and 47 touchdowns and one in year. 2019. Woo. 47 touchdowns. Is work. that better than what you did? Yeah, it's significant. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> Just want to know where we are on the measures well, there. Yeah, pretty, okay. I don't know if it's, you know. Here's Cooper launching wide open touchdown. Ahmad Edwards. 23 yard throw from Zarek Cooper with 445 to go. Talked over and over about how sloppy this game has been. This Florida State defense has done a pretty good job, but multiple penalties on this drive extended the drive for Jacksonville State. You had a pass interference, you had a hold, and then you had the targeting all helping Jacksonville State on this drive. Then they lose sight of the post on the switch concept. Jacksonville State gets the touchdown. 11 plays, 97 yards in 508. And it is a legal substitution. Defense, more, more than 11 players in the formation. That penalty's declined. Extra point is good. It's a three point game. Watch the corner in the safety on this play. You get Michael Petway on the inside. It looks like he's he's got the switch. They're expecting to switch that off. It ends up being Ahmad Edwards catch the ball. So you've got the corner on the outside expecting the safety to switch it. The safety is following as if they're going to keep stay on their guys. You end up with a wide open player in the end zone. It's the second week in a row you've had a miscommunication right. in man to man coverage for this defense that Michael Mayer touchdown last week happened early in the Notre Dame game. Also a miscommunication between the two turned the guy Scott free for a touchdown and now we got a situation where this Jacksonville State defense gets a stop. And uh, fans here in Dope Campbell Stadium are going to be a little nervous. Well, the other issue, too, is get ready for a, uh, with 4.45 to go, all three timeouts for John Gross. You got some uh, hands guys up front. Yeah, I, I, think, I think if you're Jacksonville State, you kick this one deep and you play football, you don't necessarily have to burn your timeouts right away to stop the clock and let this thing play out and see. And if Florida State is able to get a first down, then you start to burn your timeout. And they do kick it away. Douglas will let it hit. Florida State will scrimmage from its 25. And a quick check of tonight's player spotlight brought to you by Geico. Third career 100 yard game for Jay Sean Corbin tonight, Roddy. 12 for a buck one and a score. Hasn't been an overly dominant performance on the ground by Florida State, but Jay Sean Corbin has been excellent when he's gotten his hands on the football. Really like this pair of running backs. Jay Sean Corbin, Trey Sean Ward. Mm -hmm. You combine Toa Feely and Ja'Kai Douglas, who are Guys that can do stuff in the slot and in the backfield. Florida State's got a really nice running back room. A lot to be excited about. Jay Sean Corbin, the leader of that group. Well, and now Treshawn Ward starts the series. With Mackenzie Milton. They'll hand it to Toa Feely going left side. And he will push it for three, maybe four. And finally, the whistles blow shy of the 30. Florida State's got the three-point lead, four and a half to go. John Gross is sitting on the full bucket of timeouts over there. And my guess is he's going to sit on those as long as he thinks mathematically he can. Yeah, you, you play out 
this first these first downs if Florida State gets a first down then you start to think about yep. paying him on those timeouts Here's Milton going to make a quick throw near side. This is Toafili again, and he will stretch for the 30, stays in bounds, which will keep the clock rolling. Under four now to go. Wilson, the stop. And Roddy, here we are with third and the better part of four. It was a really good open field tackle by Deco Wilson. And third and four, this is, this is as big a play as we've seen all day in this game get a wholesale line change it seems like for Jacksonville State yep. Kenzie Milton play clock winding down to five he'll take the snap it's a free play Gamecocks are offside gonna take the shot and looking for Helton I believe downfield Yule Gowdy Outside. was defending. Defense, number two, five yard penalty, result in the first down. Guess what though? DJ Coleman offside, and that awards Florida State the first down. It's the one thing you can't do. It's the one thing you cannot do in that situation is jump offside. Watch the football take off. Don't even pay attention to the clap. Nice job of Florida State using the hard count, using that clap to force them offside. But for Jacksonville State, you can't do that. Here's Milton, first down hand, and Corbin pushes it for three to the 38. John Cross opting not to take his timeouts, tank a timeout here, and I like the call. You've still got plenty of time left. Yeah, but you got one of the best game managers college football has too right here. Yeah. I mean, the comeback physically one thing, but Roddy, he was wired to win when he was playing in Orlando. Yeah, you're exactly right. Yep. Mackenzie Milton going to milk every ounce of this yeah. clock. You see the numbers, 18 to 30 for 133, a touchdown to pick, but there's another handoff, and Corbin will come close to the first down, and we'll see if Jacksonville State's going to they're going to wait here with 218 to play. It's one of those. It's almost better if he gets the first down yep. than if he doesn't. Yep. Because now you got a third and short. And yes, your defense may come up with a big stop. But if they don't, that's just one extra play that you're having to sit there and run. They're in a tough spot here. You take the timeout before it, and then they get the first down. You only have your two. You take it after, and you're wasting time. Yep. John well, Ross opting to take it after. And now with 10 on the play clock, they check Milton all the way out to the wide side at the left. Wildcat set here with Corbin, and he does not get it. And there's the timeout with 139 to play. The hit made by Harper, who came crashing down from the safety spot. Wow. I. Uh... I said that it was almost better for him to get the first down. Jacksonville State's defense disagreed. They said we can stop him on third and short. An excellent job. The surge up front from this defensive line, able to push Florida State's offensive line into the backfield. There was absolutely nowhere to run. Now, if I'm Jacksonville State, you're in. If Florida State does indeed trot out the punt team, which I would fully expect them to do. You're in safe punt. You are not allowing a fake for anything. You want them to punt the ball away, catch it, well, see if you can get a drive going. And it's Florida State is four of 13 tonight on third down. Yeah. And by the way, in a couple of ball games, that makes them 11 of 29. Offense back on the field for Florida State. I am a little see if surprised you can draw by this one. Yeah. Well, you draw them. I think you're trying to draw them off sides here. Yep. And then you take a timeout if you have to, but. The last thing John Gross has to tell his team is do not jump off sides. Right. The Knowles bring in the fullback. Tight end Preston Daniel ahead of Corbin. 0 for 2 on fourth down tonight. Milton under center. Mike Norvell calls the timeout. Now they'll punt. So a quick check and chat here with the head coach of the Knowles and punt unit comes on. Don't forget next Saturday, 
triple header of football starts at noon from Central New York. Dome looked good today, didn't it? Yeah, it looked great. Yeah, we were up there last year, but great to see fans back in. They were expecting about 40,000 for Syracuse Rutgers. The great Danes of Albany in there at noon, presented by Subway with Chris Cotter, Mark Hersley, Jalen Johnson. Roddy Larish and I will be at Wallace Wade for Northwestern and Duke. And then uh, eight miles away, ACC primetime football presented by Geico, Virginia. And number 24, North Carolina, Dave O'Brien, Tim Hasselbeck, Kelsey Riggs, and the huddle, Roddy, yeah. on site. Massive game for North Carolina. You can't go down two in the division. Here's the snap, and Mastromano flips it high in the air toward Charleston, who will make the fair catch at the 17. By the way, North Carolina beat Georgia State tonight, 59-17. You'll get more of this on the huddle after dark. Sam Howell accounts for five scores tonight, 352 yards of passing, Roddy, 101 rushing. Jeez. Dual threat. All right, more coming up from uh, Jordan, Coach, EJ, and Eric afterwards. Another guy who's a dual threat is Eric Cooper. He's done it a little bit with his legs today. Minute 32, two timeouts. You can use the middle of the field. You want to get out of bounds as quickly as you can, but you can use the middle of the field. Big thing for Zarek Cooper is you cannot take a sack, and the sloppiness of Florida State has gotten to us to the point where we've got a, a potentially game tying or winning draw. Here's Cooper going to cut it loose on first down and almost intercepted. Steven Dix, the linebacker, the redshirt freshman from Dr. Phillips in Orlando, almost closed the house down. He's coming from inside out. That hesitation there. I'm not sure where Zarek Cooper is throwing the ball, quite honestly, but. Kind of hesitating to get through some traffic and actually put him in the throwing lane of Zara Cooper. Second down 10. Here's the snap to Cooper. Receiver fell down. Cooper now to his left. He will slide and three goal helmets collapse right there on top of him. You can't do that if you're Zara Cooper. You either run to get out of bounds or you throw the ball yep. away. You can't do that. Steven Dix is hobbling. He was one of the guys in there on the hit. Wiggins stays in the game with Cooper. They check Wells here to the near side. Three receivers to the top. Third down and eight. Cooper looking for Wells, and he hangs on, makes the catch at the 30. 55, 56 seconds left, and they'll move the chains. Throw is low. Nice job by Wells of corralling that. Clearly a catch. Here's Cooper looking middle of the field again. 40 seconds to play to his right. Now a throw that will go out of bounds. Stopping the clock with 36 seconds left. Dennis Briggs. Is Eric Cooper kind of playing with fire on some of these I, rushes? I don't know. In, in essence, Roddy, if you're looking right, you got to get the ball out. Yeah, at some point you say, all right, play's over. Let's get the ball out. Right. And, and I, I think he's. Probably a couple seconds too slow getting there right now. Okay. Well, he may not have many more snaps. It's second and the full ten. There's still two timeouts. That's it. But if you don't get, if you get tackled in bounds now, you have to take one. Here's Cooper backing up the throw. Wiggins the catch out of bounds at the 35. And it looked like for a moment that Tylen Grable might have been holding off a Seminole. Roddy, can you believe we've gotten to this with 29 seconds left? Uh, I, I can't, and, and and yet, Wes, we've been talking about it. Like, Jacksonville State's just kind of been hanging around. They have, they were never out of it in a score and a stop, and anything can happen, and that's how we've gotten here. Cooper with 29 seconds left. Now steps up. They'll have to use another timeout as he's tackled at the 41 yard line with 22 seconds left. He did get the first down, and John Gross is going to burn the timeout on the tackle of Malcolm Ray. So, one left for Jacksonville State. Florida State's out of them with 22 seconds left. Roddy, and here's kind of now you wonder. Alan Karadzic and where he might be in this process. 
career long 46 46 yards so you're talking about getting to about the 29 yard line to get a 46 yard field goal in order to get the 50 yard field goal it's about the 33 so you're talking about covering another 25 yards or so yeah. you've got one timeout now so so you can in a last resort you will take the yardage and have to in the middle of the field and burn that timeout but you would like to use the sidelines so you can save that timeout to set up the best possible play to get a field goal attempt well he hit a 46 yarder at eastern illinois last april he was 14 of 19 last fall and spring if you will and john gross knows certainly where this has to go Cooper first and 10, 22 seconds left. Jacksonville State has one timeout left, and Cooper's going to throw the long ball for Petway, and it's incomplete. Jamie Robinson was in coverage for Florida State battling. 17 seconds now. Now you're starting to count how many plays do we have left. You're talking about four, four at the most four plays. Well, you got to get the ball and out. Got to get the ball out of bounds. Yep. Well, you go in, if you throw it in the middle, you cannot throw it in the middle of the field. You can. Well, you got one time but you out. you got to get a chunk. Yeah. You can't throw it in the middle of the field for a three-yard game. That's it. P.J. Wells off the formation here to the left. He's been the hot guy lately. Here's Cooper. He's got to get rid of it, and that's going to be incomplete. Stops the clock with 11 seconds left. Dennis Briggs has been very effective from the interior of Florida State's front here in this drive. Certainly has. He and Fabian Lovett have both had their flashes today. There's Briggs there in the middle. He's going to push through. A nice job using the hands. Cam Hill, his feet go dead and allows the pressure into the backfield. All right, now 11 seconds left. you got about two plays left. So you're trying to push this thing down the field. Empty the backfield. Here's Cooper looking for Wells, going to tee him up again, and P.J. Wells, who's having a career night, can't haul it in against Jones. He'd have gone to the other side. DeMond Filiot Johnson was open going up the other side with only the safety to get over there. Certainly a throw that Zarek Cooper could have made. Now six seconds. You have to go really quick if you're not going to throw a Hail Mary. you got to get a first down here or the game's over. Yep. And you got to. Here's Cooper, four man rush for Florida State. Going to cut it loose. Phil Yaw Johnson caught it inside the 10. Phil Yaw Johnson on his feet. He'll cut back. And Jacksonville State has won at the horn. On the final play of the game, Zarek Cooper throws to DeMond Philyaw Johnson, and the Gamecocks have upset the Seminoles. 59 yards. Wes, I, I cannot believe what we just saw. A heave down the sideline, hoping to get in field goal range, is caught by DeMond Philia Johnson. He gets a block out front and is able to get into the end zone to win the game on a walk-off. Give credit where credit's due. Jacksonville State hung around and hung around and hung around in this game. It was sloppy. It, was, it wasn't clean by any means. But they were never out of this, and they believed. But Florida State, the penalties, the sloppiness, the missed opportunities consistently, and then finally the heat down the field. Billy Yaw Johnson on the outside against Jarvis Brownlee. Brownlee doesn't get the, doesn't knock the ball down, doesn't secure the tackle either. Ahmad Edwards cleared the path, Roddy. Ahmad, give a lot of credit to Ahmad Edwards, too. But Brownlee, you got to secure the man or the ball. He doesn't do either. Sidney Williams overruns the play. And on a walk-off, 
Florida State loses the game. Another, why, why does Florida State not have more guys deep? That's another question that I have in that situation. Six seconds left. Downstairs, Larissa Harris. Take me through that last play and how you made it into the end zone. Well, that was my boy DJ. I got to give him the credit, but so we just really ran four verts. We just trusted it, Coop threw a good ball to DJ. He made a great athletic play and got in the end zone. And how are you feeling right now, knowing that you helped your team come out victorious? Shoot, amazing. It's just a blessing from God, and I just thank him for it. Congratulations. Thank you. Wes? Michael Petway, a big night. Jacksonville State, a stunning win tonight over Florida State on the final play of the game. Unbelievable, Wes. Unbelievable. It's four verts, and the only two guys that have a shot are Brownlee and Sidney Williams. And wow. I mean, I don't think there's anything else you can say. What a gut wrenching loss for a Florida State team that just six days ago was coming off of, yes, a loss to Notre Dame, but with so much promise, so much positivity coming out of it. So Eric Cooper's got a clean pocket to throw from delivers a beautiful ball his best throw of the night and Damon Filiot Johnson comes up with it and the elation from the Clemson transfer coming back to an ACC school on the road and upsetting Florida State John Gross a Jacksonville State graduate his 69th win will probably be one he remembers for a long long time on the final play of the game Jacksonville State wins 20 to 17 tonight over Florida State Jacksonville State certainly celebrating their win unbelievable unbelievable I mean Florida State's up 10 points late in the fourth. How about the third down stop by Jacksonville State to force the punt on fourth down? They're going to need to clean out the field, clear out the field. I know these Jacksonville State guys are really fired up, but Florida State obviously going to take offense to what's going on. The frustrations of Florida State certainly evident. Tell you what, an amazing night in Tallahassee. Ball game kind of lulled around. We got to finish. We had a firework blast at the end from Zarek Cooper to DeMond Phil Yaw Johnson, a former Clemson quarterback to a former Duke wide receiver. Unbelievable. Great to, great to be with Roddy Jones, Larisha Harris. Thanks to our producer, Alex Farmartino, our director, Kirby Kander. Jacksonville State 20, Florida State 17. We'll see you next Saturday in Durham. Off to the huddle after dark. Jordan Cornette, take it away. But in about a week or two, everybody forgets about it. But they're not going to forget about it. Let this. me come back to you, Coach, when you say it never should have happened. What got them to that point? Where did Florida State fail themselves? Where it got to that point where that's what was happening? I mean, the whole game. I mean, it was sloppy from the get-go. EJ, I know you, you want to say something here, but rushing the ball, couldn't move the ball, couldn't hold on to the ball, couldn't protect your quarterback, couldn't make big-time throws. That was not the McKenzie Milton that we saw a week ago making amazing plays. And it ended up in, in a loss. Guys, it goes back to the last time Florida State had the football. Third and one. They're in the gun wildcat formation. And I'm sitting, we're all watching the game. And I'm sitting here pulling my hair out. Right. You're in the, you're in the shotgun, basically six yards away from the first down. Okay? Right. Get, get under center. <laughs> quarterback sneak, fullback dive, like, you know, old school uh, stuff, Coach. I, I mean, just like get the get the one yard. You ice the game that way. Right. You don't give the ball back to a Jacksonville State Your offense that is obviously rolling. That was a great tease for the beak of the week we'll have here <laughs> Coach, I'm just, at, the I'm, the, at the end of the show. Oh, my guys, gosh. I'm right with guys, you, man. Guys, guys, man, this is yeah, bad, it's, man. It's, Seriously, it's bad. this is bad. This is a bad loss, not just for Florida State, but for the ACC as a whole. Like, this, you lose to J Jacksonville State, that can't happen. Seriously, like this – I'm lost. I'm at a loss for words, to be completely honest with you. Week, be completely honest. A week ago, everybody high on Florida State. It was an emotional game. Yeah. It, was a, it was a game that everybody felt like was rooting against Notre Dame because of McKenzie Milton, that story. What was the biggest difference in what you saw last week, Emac, 
to what you saw today from Florida State. It, it's very confusing because we've seen this Jacksonville State team not be able to score a point on a, against a much lesser opponent than FSU. We see a team in Florida State go against a top 10 right. opponent in Notre Dame, who, by the way, we think is a little overrated. Right. And take them to the wire. But still take a good team. Overtime. Yeah, exactly. Right. A, good, a good team. It, it was Jekyll and Hyde. It, it was two different teams. The effort, was it a little bit of coming off an emotional game from that Notre Dame and just not being able to play, disrespecting right. these guys? I, we almost saw it with Miami. We saw it right here with FSU. I think they were jacked out of their minds to play Notre Dame. I think this Jacksonville State name didn't get them hyped up. Right. Didn't have the same energy. I think it's exactly what you just mentioned. If you're not ready for a 60-minute battle and it becomes a 60-minute battle, it's too late. You got to get That's ready before right. the game for that battle because if you don't, a team like that will sneak up on you and, and steal one from you. EJ, fair to say they overlooked this opponent. <laughs> honestly, I'm just like, I'm literally at a loss for where is Jordan. And that's a great question. Obviously, yeah, I mean, they, 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 I don't know, man. Well, this, this is I have no answer. This is as this challenging point. as it gets for this role honestly, for you. Like, hey, I'm here's, here's, right what, here's what's challenging. I'm befuddled. To be the head coach in that locker room. I, absolutely. And talk to that team and try to keep it. What, do you, what do you say? What do you say? say? Honestly, I, coach, I, what do you say? I, I don't know what you say. I think you tell it like it is. And you 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 be careful with certain things you say because yeah because you can't take them back you right. can't take you guys, words back but you got to say you got to let them know this is unacceptable, unacceptable yeah. and then you got to you got to find a way to hold it somehow you got to give the leadership of your team and keep the team together somehow. That's all you can do. Uh, prisoners of the moment, you can argue that, but you would have to say when you take a look at the big number here. And you put this in context, it's the first loss in program history to an FCS program, and it's how they lost, which is going to replay all week long until Florida State gets the opportunity to go back there. Well, here's and the other thing. We thought they did so great against the Notre Dame, and like you said, we think they might be overrated. I mean, Toledo about right. knocked down, knocked Notre Dame down. So is right. Toledo that good? Right. Was Notre Dame maybe not so good? Maybe they're a little, like you said, overrated for a But either way, game. going back, and I, I feel you, Coach, but you, just, you don't lose to Jacksonville State. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, no. You don't. Like, oh, you just don't. And then okay. it's at home. You have your home crowd. Imagine what that's going to do to the fan base. You yeah. know, it just, as recruiting. an alum. Recruiting. Yeah, as an alum, I'm, I'm embarrassed, to be completely honest with you. I'm embarrassed. The way that the game ended, guys. Understand situations. Ice it with getting a first down. You keep the, you keep the ball. You don't give Jacksonville a, a chance to even score. And then they get a drive going. Quarterback's not even really handling a two-minute drill no, the no, right way. No. Almost gave it up. Throws a Hail Mary. Two guys get a chance to make a tackle, and they don't do it. Come on, man. Worth noting. Come on. And I, and I know it's tough in this moment, but we all understand Coach Norvell has a very massive rebuild in front of him. You hope there wouldn't be moments like this. I'm not making any excuses. Oh, no, Jordan, they have good players, man. I yeah. mean, and I don't know if a rebuild. I don't think rebuild's the yeah, right they word. Have Alabama players. lost to what? Louisiana Monroe or somebody? Year one, oh, right, right. So yeah. I mean, it's it's not like it's never happened before. Come on with right. me, coach. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, we got to try and bottle up some optimism here. Uh, App State beat Michigan in 2007. Yeah. That launched that Big Ten network. Yes. So why don't we take a look Too at so, App State man. versus so. Miami here? Uh, could it happen? Uh, and could another ACC team have a letdown? Uh, Chase Bryce, you remember him, former Duke and Clemson quarterback. Here he is. Uh, try to make a play, but it's Carter stretch it out for the pick of Mari Carter and Miami. How about athleticism making things happen? Miami in business. Moments later, can they capitalize? Sure they can. Donald Cheney Jr. takes it in for the one-yard run. Miami leads 7-0. About five minutes left in the first quarter. This App State team, Eric, they were up for the fight. Cameron Peoples, 28 yards. Absolutely, and you look at Cameron Peoples, man. This guy is a freak. I got to call his bowl game a year ago. And anytime he touches it, home run ability, he's that special. And the special teams, too, Eric. You just keep it going. This is a fifth year guy in Virgil who just shows off this speed. Watch this burst. This is Miami against Ooh, App, State. App State. That's that mountain speed, DJ. <laughs> well, you know, when you watch that play, there was guys pursuing him that were going at a certain speed. And then right. when he got past them, they ran faster. Why aren't you running faster sooner? That's right. Cameron Harris ran pretty fast right here. Coach Miami takes the lead 19-14 at that point early in the third. Into the fourth now. Chase Bryce, we hope to see more of these moments at Duke. An absolute dime to Malik Williams. 41 yards, putting them in scoring position. Chase has this in the bag, Eric. Yeah, he absolutely does. And, and a guy who has so much talent. We saw it in, in a heroic game against Syracuse at Clemson. And then now with what he's able to do here, just throwing a dart. Great play call, number one. 
but a great throw into the end zone. And at that point, Abbott State takes the lead 23-22. They could not complete the two-point conversion. Under five minutes to play, Derek King ever resilient from room. Mike Harley, 12 yards into field goal territory are the Canes. Andres Borgalis. Yeah. It's in the Borgalis. DNA. Hey, guys, reason to smile here, Coach. One of your other programs getting it done. The 43-yard field goal. Miami holds on 25-23. Tiffany Blackman with the winning coach, Coach Manny Diaz. Coach, this was a hard-fought win for you all to try to hang on to. What will you take away from this win? Well, that we had the character to gut it out. Didn't look good for a long time. That's a really good football team. Coach Clark and the staff do a great job. This is what App State does to people, right? They come and they win these games on the road. Um, but they didn't do it tonight. And that's because of the, the heart and spirit of our guys finding a way to grind it out and win the game at the end. Speaking of heart and spirit, your quarterback, De'Ara King, you know, showed a lot of resolve, as you talked about, coming back eight months after that knee injury. You saw the mobility tonight. Is he back? Yeah, he looked back to me. He did everything possible for the team to win the game. You know, it wasn't happening in the passing game. It was doing with his legs, lowering his head, make even the plays right there to run the clock out. Whatever it takes for us to win, Derek is a winner. And the moxie of your freshman kicker, what can you say about him? That guy's special. I, I mean, that's no easy kick. And uh, go up there and, um, and to knock it right through. And everybody on the sideline believed he would. He's just that type of kid. Thanks, Coach. Enjoy it. Okay, thank you. Well, the Canes narrowly escape what would be a stunning loss, especially because of what history has shown they do in home openers there at Hard Rock Stadium. A perfect 14-0 since they started calling that home in 2008. 5-0 all-time versus Sunbelt Conference teams after the win today over App State. So, Eric, it, it, they didn't shine in this one. Didn't come out and play necessarily how we thought they would, but they got it done. Well, they, they actually did play how I thought. The, the most important thing was the W, what was getting the win. This is a program win. Coach, we talked about this. I've talked about it all summer, it feels like. How are you going to respond after Alabama? Right. What is it going to look like? You got the W. This team right. easily from App State is a very good team, by the way, in App no State. Could have got this victory. Could have had you looking in the rearview mirror, get you at home, get this big dub, but they didn't. So I think that shows Miami is going in the right direction as a program, as a culture, as a mindset. Of course you want to blow these type of teams out. Of course you do. But we're going in the right direction if we're Miami. Thank goodness for De'Ara King. Yes. His leadership yes. and his playing ability, his running ability, his throwing ability, just his ability to uh, take a team on his shoulders and change the total dynamic of how those guys believe. And with him, they're pretty stinking good without him. They're going to struggle. Absolutely. And Derek just has that leadership, that poise, uh, obviously being the centerpiece of this team. And I think the guys beat off him. You know, and like you said, Emac, this is a tough game, and App State is a good program. Chase Bryce is obviously playing much better football than he was playing at Duke last year. Right. Yep. So great to see that for him. Uh, he's but playing like on said, a better team. Yeah, he's playing yeah, yeah. exactly. Playing on a better team with better guys around him. And a similar speed to what Miami has. So I thought this was a pretty evenly matched game, but good for the Canes to come out with a W. Totally understand. The opponent was different this week. It's not Alabama. It was App State. Uh, Still a good Miami's team. Miami's defense looked like it took a little bit of a step here. Would you agree, EJ? I think so. I mean, you still have a high-powered passing attack in Chase Bryce. From what he did last uh, weekend, throwing for over 65% completions and over 250 yards, you have to have respect for him as a passer. And I thought Miami's defense did a good job getting guys on the ground, uh, a bunch of opportunities where, of course, they can clean it up. And it's still the second game of the season, right. and they will. But I think overall, compared to what they did last week versus Alabama, it was a much more improved defense that we saw. Wait till the third game of the season. <laughs> Michigan State had yeah. running back. Well, run who's, the the, who's the transfer? Yeah, uh, Walker. Kenneth from, Walker. Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Wake third. Forest. Walker. From Wake. Yeah. yeah. That guy's a Over beast. Over 200 last week. He, and, and, I'm, and that's that was my biggest deal with the with the defense for Miami is can they hold up against the run? They're going to find out next week. The, the good thing is you've had that Alabama attack. Now you've had this App State attack. Michigan State is going to look more like App State. That's going to be the, the offense that they're going to see. So it's a good warm-up for what you have here. Now you have to make those improvements. Well, you guys are eager to look ahead. Why don't we take a look back? And everybody remembers what week one in this conference was like and how the programs within the conference fair versus power five non-conference teams. Four L's. Which leads us to Pittsburgh and Tennessee. Non-conference, on the road, an opportunity for Pitt versus an SEC program in Nayland Stadium, which was rocking, a tall task. The Johnny Majors Classic, we picked this one up early first quarter. Pitt, a three and out. From showing this, you know what that means, Eric. 
It's not good, man. Special teams not being special here. Just really lack of effort, lack of execution on the backside. All you have to do is come down, block your man, zero effort on that play. I know Coach Narduzzi not excited about that. Great play by Tennessee. Tennessee would capitalize, go up 7 nothing there. Pitt looking for a jolt. They Whoa. go with a little bit of trickery. Kenny Pickett laterals to Jared Wayne. Ultimately ends up with Lucas Kroll, the Gator transfer. Great creativity when needed, EJ. Yeah, Lucas Kroll is the X factor, guys. He got a nice little trick play right here, but he's going to be so pivotal to this offensive success all season long. Coach, you love him. Kenny Pickett out here making plays. My man, Kenny, I used to hate his guts. Now I love him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. That big loss that we had when he's a true freshman. Attaboy. Look at this guy. Attaboy. If he slides, he does not get the first down. It was a fourth down get. And it was under all center, center, coach. Under huh? center. Can you imagine getting under QB center sneak. <laughs> and a short yardage play? Oh. My goodness. And then and it worked. Must be nice. And then the number called for your boy Jordan Addison. Namesake nice. getting it done. Pick Addison, Taser, Mack, all of a sudden they got in the game game plan. It's still defense, though. It's That's still right. defense yeah. with Pitt. When they absolutely needed that? it on a fourth and one, they get the fourth stop. Fourth and one in the gun, though. This, I'm telling you, this, this, this game gun. won't work in fourth and one situations, guys. Short yardage goal line. Maybe I'll do a segment on EJ's manual's excess or something, but good gracious. I love it. Coach Nardizzi post game. Unreal. Yeah, I mean, Kenny.